Good morning, everyone. Hey, check it out, man. We got a stream for you today. This is going to be fun. And I also got chess with us, so you know it's going to be enjoyable. You know, always know that something has gone horribly wrong if I get pulled in for things. Right? I, 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 I'm like, you know what? I was going to do this solo, which I'm used to doing a lot of things solo, but I was like, you know what? Maybe chess can lend a helping hand. Did you make me wide? I did. I, you know, I got to size this better. I was working, I didn't want, because I have this like high def camera, and so I, I'm like six by nine kind of thing. And you're like, on the Google Hangouts, you're, you're like, 720p or something and i don't know 480 and so uh, anyways I, yeah. I, can, I can cut you back down a little bit make it kind of i'm fat yeah i'll make it a little bit more normal there there you go that that should do it is that better eh, right. i don't know i need to catch up <laughs> all right so anyways uh first of all thank you uh aya moon for the ten dollar super chat sticker uh we appreciate uh, that before you even started she could even she was so excited for this she could even wait she just kind of threw that out no. there so i have to acknowledge that and i appreciate it very much uh, so what we're going to do today, uh, the other day, I'm going to give you the too long didn't read. That should take about an hour for me to explain. <laughs> you know, me. Two hours later. <laughs> two hours later, Steve finished explaining. So, and I still, you're still not right. I don't know. Let me see. We'll be down a little bit. I, 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 there you go. All right. Uh, so I had a, uh, I was in a debate group called Atheist and Christians Debate Central. And I was in that group for a very long time. I mean, seriously, I mean, like a long time. And. I kind of have a rule anymore, and my rule is that I don't really engage admins. Um, you know, if they say something's wrong, you broke a rule, whatever, but I don't engage them on the topics. The reason being is I found from my, my personal experience that admins generally use mod powers to mute, mute boot, and uh, basically control the narrative when you are explaining to them topics that uh, they do not understand. So. Yeah. I, I informed this guy. Let me. So let me. Uh, again, I'm not in this group anymore. So even though it's private, uh, I I have no onus to have anything, you know, privatized. Uh, I did record the debate, and I get had his permission to do so. So regardless, I, I definitely uh, had his permission prior to me showing anything. He said, "Yeah, you can record the, the debate." Uh, so this was a, a, an admin named Josh G. Nichols. Who I've later found out uh, does this to a lot of people that he just doesn't have the skill set. He's incompetent, and what he'll do is he'll bait people, I guess, and then take it out of them when he gets his ass handed to them. So, oh, what? Yeah, I mean, sounds like a good good person to give mod abilities to. Right? Who's in charge of giving out mods? Why is this person still a mod? Not even a mod. He's an admin. Why is he an admin? Yeah. Oh, God. All right. So there is a very specific rule that we had on the non sequitur show discord as well as we've carried it over onto Bull's server. Um, and it'll probably hang on. It'll be a hangover rule to pretty much anything we ever do. And it's essentially that if a mod is get in a debate, they are not allowed to mute or kick the person. They have to call in another mod. Correct. They have to call in another mod. If they do not call in another mod, it starts counting as strikes on that mod before they lose their mod. Pay. Yeah, I had look. That was a rule that we had in the Great Debate community on G Plus for the longest time. Mm -hmm. Bullinator was a moderator. Uh, a lot of people that have been around. No, yeah, and so I actually formulated other rules. And matter of fact, I still have the rules somewhere on my GreatDebateCommunity.com. Uh, and one of those rules was that, that uh, an admin, if he's going to be engaging in the topic, cannot moderate the topic because that would be unfair. It, 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 it right. basically, uh, the person, you know, it, it, uh, you can't have a fair discussion if you, the person that you're discussing it with can mute, mute a beauty. Now, now, let me make it very clear. I, I, in the Great Debate Computer on Facebook, Look, uh, I am the person that has to, to make the final decisions. And I will mute and, mute and boot uh, in an locator if they're basically using fallacies or not addressing it, if they're just uh, well, there's a difference. But between, that's a difference, right? Well, there's a difference between when you're moderating your own discussion, like when it's happening, versus if you go back and look at it, or if you have somebody... If you have other mods being like, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no. And also if you are the owner of the group. Yeah. <laughs> like if you're not just the admin, you're the one who runs the group. If you're the one who runs the group, then yeah, you're going to get final say no matter what. And sometimes that's shitty. But ideally you would have decent mods that you've got working with you who will say like, hey, no, you don't need to this person isn't actually doing it. Like they'll give you pushback on when things are reasonable. There's a couple of times I gave pushback on admins for, uh, or sorry, uh, in the in the uh, non-sequitur show discord with uh, 
uh, somebody got kicked. Oh, even a little while ago, somebody got kicked. And I was like, okay, why did this person get kicked? And then the, the person who kicked them came back and I was like, okay, but you shouldn't have kicked them. It, they might have been able to be kicked later, but you shouldn't have been kicking them at this time because you're the one interlocking with them. So what you should have done is you should have called in another mod, let them make the call. Or if you weren't okay with that, you need to log the interaction, leave the interaction, and let the owner make the final decision. Yeah, I, and I think that's a simple way, way of doing it. Uh, you know, like I said, I will give people 24-hour timeouts when they make, like, for example, if, if I have very right. specific rules in the Great Debate community on Facebook, and I think a lot of people like these particular rules because it doesn't allow for gish galloping. It doesn't allow for making false, uh, fallacious claims, you know, false fallacy fallacies. Uh, and so if you, make a, if you make a claim, hey, you committed a fallacy, you need to show the format of the fallacy and how the person committed it. Uh, if you say right. a person is wrong, you need, you need to explain why you think they're wrong, right? You can't just throw it out there right. by fiat. And so we've had these rules for a very long time, and they allow for very coherent, cogent discussions. It's not like you can argue by meme, right? You start, you know, like, oh, hey, here's a meme. No, we don't allow that in the Great Debate community on Facebook. So uh, it's, it's very strict, I guess. But you know, as the owner and an admin, I, I hold that to, to anybody. And if somebody says, hey, Steve, you said that this person committed a fallacy. What do they commit a fallacy at? I have to be able to explain it, right? I hold myself to the yeah. same standards. Uh, Res instance, ten dollars super sticker, laughing. What is that anyway? I don't even know what the hell that is. Pear? Is I think it, it's a pear. A blue pear? Kind of teal. I, mean, I don't know. But, uh, Maybe it's not ripe yet. Uh, I wouldn't eat it, but I'll take the sticker. Thank you, Res. Appreciate it, man. By the way, um, Res, you do not like green eggs and ham. Oh, wait, never mind. I, thought, I was going to say something else, but I totally forgot. It wasn't the same res. I keep on getting res confused with this other guy uh, on Facebook, and I don't know why. And I know who this res is very much, and I just, I don't know why I think he's on Facebook, but the guy on Facebook's a completely different person. But, it just, like, gets, it's just, it's an idea that got stuck in your head, and it yeah, just lives there now. I spill my, it's, my, it's head, my I like to call that head cannon. Yeah, you know, it happens. But, okay, so anyways, this guy, Josh, he, um, he, he basically baited me into a debate. And look, and I said, look, I don't usually debate, uh, especially in written form. I, I did with Richard Carrier. We went on for about a month. And um, oh, God. yeah, and, and, and everything they say about Carrier, I look, I like the guy, but everything they say about him is true. He will go down so many different rabbit holes and just basically obfuscate the entire debate. Uh, he throws out a lot of things that he has to support. Bart Ehrman made the same observations about uh, Dr. Carrier that I've made, uh, uh, everyone that I know that have any, ever interacted with Richard. He just does this. And he basically, uh, to me, does, doesn't does really substantiate what he's saying. It doesn't answer your questions very much. And he'll just try to, to throw as much stuff against the wall and you're going down rabbit holes. And I, it's not the way I like to discuss things. It's just not. It just, to me, is not conducive to have a, a discussion unless you're talking about one specific thing, which by the way, I'm still having trying to have a discussion with Randolph Richardson, uh, Neil, uh, the atheist. What is it, Neil? Uh, 842, 642, 8612, pi, whatever. Uh, my dad, the same hair as me. Uh, he he <laughs> was asking me about it today, and uh, I said, "Look, I I don't know the status on it because um, I can't even get the guy to even give me his citational list." And because I said, "Look, if I'm gonna have a debate with this guy, I'm no longer doing these basal." base level, hey, I have a dictionary debates. It's not worth my time. I'm going to do one more on May 2nd on Modern Day Debate with Snake. I'm going to give him part two. I'm going to do a little bit differently this time. But I'm no longer having those types of discussions. If you want to bring a dictionary, go to second grade. I just waste my time. But I told Randolph, because he's, he's a big big player, I guess, you know. Look, if you want to say that I'm wrong about these terms, how they're normally normally used, and right, logic's wrong, you need to bring something substantive to the table. If you don't bring anything substantive to the table, I'm not going to waste my time. Here's my citation list. What is yours? Because I don't want them to start running, you know, oh, well, here's a dictionary. I'm done with that. So don't know the status on that. Residence is $2. Oh, you, you know what? I, what do I have you for? What I got, you're supposed to read these things. Here's an easy distinction. I don't use Facebook. Smart. Yeah, no, that's... <laughs> uh, she also said, is he better than T-Jump in answering questions? Who? who uh, which one? The, the guy that you're talking to. Oh, no. Not at all. Oh. Nicholas, Nicholas guy. Well, no, I mean, right, you mean uh, this guy? No, he could have get past the first question. Could have get oh, past God. the first question. I mean, so, all right. so, so let, me, let, me, let me get back to the background. So I, I said, look. If you tell, if you say you're not going to boot mute me, boot me or whatever, I'll, I'll be happy because you're like you're such a coward, Steve. I'm gonna look, look, man. I'll take on anybody if you think you got an argument, right? 
Um, mm -hmm. But I was like, you know, you're an admin. And I you're don't not want... going to be a waste of my time. Exactly. And I said, you're an admin. I, 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 and I look, I, I have my experiences. If you piss off an admin because you show they're the wrong, they're going to mute a boot you. It's just my experience, right? I mean, I was kicked out of Atheist Republic. I was kicked out of Atheist Experience uh, Group. I mean, I mean, oh, they were out asking of... about Carrier. If Carrier, oh, Carrier. Um, I don't understand his answers sometimes. And then he gets frustrated and just says, well, I'm tired of explaining it. You know, he called Bart Ehrman, you know, a fraud kind of thing or a liar. I don't know. He, he just, he basically tries to tear down his interlocutor rather than just simply answer the questions. Because my question to him was basically very simple. I'm like, Carrier. Well, better than T-Jump. Yes. Oh, yeah. And answering questions. Well, yeah, okay. I guess so. Yeah, I guess so. But, <laughs> yeah, my Carrier, my, well, simple, my, I don't know how we're so off topic where we do that. My, this is why we spend three, two hours for a 20 minute show. And this is even a regular scheduled show. Uh, <laughs> I get good at talking, I guess. So I asked Carrier, look, if you could put everything down to a probability, right? Because he's really into probability and Bayes theorem and stuff like that. And I was like, so what? You said there's no, there's no such thing as certainty. And I'm like, well, what is it when you have uh, a mathematical certainty, right? I mean, do you not? He says, you know, we can't have point one. We can't. So you have zero and one is your is your range. Zero is not possible one is zero is zero epistemic certainty and one is full epistemic certainty so i'm like well what is what if we can't have a one then I, how do you justify you know law of identity or something like that what would you place law of identity as if it's not a one I, give me a number right couldn't get anything couldn't get anything out of him and i even asked in the philosophy group that we're in i had the discussion with the carrier this was an actual philosophy group i'm like i had this guy the carrier and he's like saying that we can't have a certainty of one and like, so what would you place the law of identity as? If I say X equals X, give me a percentage of what do you think the certainty is of that? I, I couldn't get any answer out of them. And they didn't know either. They're like, I, we have no idea. I place that as a certainty as one myself. I mean, I'm, I'm certain about it. I know it. It's right. It cannot be wrong. It has to exist in all possible worlds. It's certainty as one. I mean, what else would you call certain? Right? Yeah, fair. Yeah. Man, I keep, I keep spilling my coffee. I mean, I don't know what the hell's going on today. I can't I have a drinking problem. <laughs> this is regular coffee too. I don't even have anything in it, but I have a drinking problem. Uh, today. Confirm. Take that clip. Steve has a drinking problem. Yeah, I got a drinking problem. He I can't drink my coffee it. right. Exposed. Yeah. I keep. I, I can tell you, by the way, the answer as to why um, we get off topic and go on uh, go on tangents that last forever is because we actually let the chat interact with us. Oh, I love that. Yeah. No, I agree with you. If we didn't, if we didn't address anything that the chat said, we would probably be these these videos would be a lot shorter. These hangouts would be shorter because we would just boom, 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 boom. Yeah. But uh, we don't do that. We like to talk to everybody. Amir says, anyone that disagrees with which carrier is a support of the Christian do 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 dominationism that seeks to impose Christian Sharia law on the USSSA. <laughs> By the way, you're not allowed to, I guess you're not allowed to disagree with carrier. I don't know. I'm not a mythicist. I'm a historicist. Oh. So I, I don't know. Every academic I know is a historicist. I don't really know any mythicist besides like Arn. Uh, uh, I, that, is uh, Jim a mythicist? No. Jim Majors? No? Okay. No way. Right. He's a total historian. Yeah, he's a, he hates mythicism. He thinks Carrier's bonkers. That's what I thought. Yeah. I couldn't rem I remember him like being really mad about it one time, but I couldn't remember which way he was mad about. <laughs> yeah, and Jim, Jim is about as atheist as you get, too, right? Uh, Jim's great. I love Jim, but he's he, he's about as atheist as you get. I don't know what's a butt there. I love Jim. There's no butt, but uh, he, he's, he's full on atheist, There's but no he's like... There. He's like, yeah, this whole mythicism stuff is just nonsense. Um, again, I don't have a dog in the fight. I don't know enough about it to really argue one way or another. I just, I just know if I hear Tacitus or Josephus one more time, I'm gonna lose my freaking mind. <laughs> right? I, I can't do it. I can't, I can't listen through another Josephus and just Tacitus. I, I can't. It's just ridiculous. But anyways, so let's get back to the. Uh, so this guy Josh, I, I, and I said, fine. So I'll tell you what. I said I'll schedule a one-to-one -one written, de written debate, just you and me, like I had with Carrier. Um, we'll, we'll do it for about a week and see where it goes. My own, uh, and his says, well, uh, he says, fine, but we have to uh, answer each other's questions. And I said, okay, well, we only have one question at a time. And so you think that my, my argument is flawed. You think my logic is flawed. And so I'm going to, to ask the first question, and this is how it went. And again, I recorded it. Um, I also got his response that I'll be showing you after this. Um, but this is how it went. So I said, Adam and Josh has said, by the way, I know this is kind of weirdly worded, but I was in a hurry, uh, has said he would debate me and has seemed, to, has not, I should have put it as, has seemed to imply that he will not use mod or admin powers to silence me, mute me, or remove me. I was seriously mistaken. He's done all of those. Uh, well, no, he didn't mute me. He, he basically, on one post, he turned off commenting, 
Then he uh, removed another post of mine, and then he booted me from the group. Yeah, fair. You know, right? Uh, and so, uh... so my argument is this. Uh, I, I basically, I'm not going to go through the entire argument, because you guys have seen it before. This is my, what I call, uh, I coined, uh, the weak atheist special pleading argument. That's what it's going to be known mm -hmm. as. I have it on my Facebook page, or some of my great debate pages in the video description. Um, this is a pretty well rel substantiated argument. If there's any logical errors in it, I'll definitely fix them. The summation, I think, is perfect. I, I, I can't see any logical errors in the summation. Now, how I got to the summation, there might be. I, I don't think so, but if anybody can find any, I'm happy to change that. But the, 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 the final, like the Venn diagram that people have been seeing that's floating around, I had that check with Landon Kurt Knoll. You know, who's a world famous mathematician. I don't see any issues with it, but if somebody has one, all they got to is tell me and we'll, we'll see if we can fix it, right? So, I, this is, you know, like I said, people have seen this argument before. It's, it's based on logic. So, I'm not going to go through the entire argument because it doesn't really matter, right? So, what, it, what does matter is that this is a logical argument, right? This is not a definitional argument. This is not a, hey, you know, what is even normative? This is an argument straight from the, the foundations of logic. Matter of fact, I could have even started with the law of non contradictions if I wanted to as an axiom and then derived all these but i didn't go that far i just started with the, for, the general form of uh, a type of a set of propositions and then you have the set of non-propositions right so basically right. Five, five or not five okay and or you use row i think sometimes so i just want to really touch i want to touch on really quick if you guys look at your screen right now this looks very complicated it looks very complicated. So this is the kind of debate that we're talking about yeah. jumping into. For this this poor unsuspecting person named Josh. Yeah, yeah. Look, I mean, I'm again, I'm not bothering with this this le base level stuff any longer. Um, Ten dollar super chat unveiling the mask. Thank you. Mwah. Love your channel. Uh, if you guys, she's she, she's basically shilling for her own channel, which is basically me because I'm her and she's me. I guess from I, I tell her what to do. I guess with the new narrative. I send her videos and say, hey, here's videos, um, which has never happened, <laughs> but whatever. Uh, but yeah, I'm not doing the whole base level stuff anymore. I, I, I'm going to be doing a new show. But you can't sit down and every time you start the conversation, have to start by explain. Like, ha you, you can't have somebody say, oh, you're wrong, and then have to explain to them every single step at like a grade nine level before like how can they possibly know you're wrong if they don't even understand the bases so by starting the the debate with something like this if they don't understand it and you have to explain it the debate is over yeah and that and that's kind of what, lost. that's what we're going to see kind of happens like i said i'm i'm a, i've already done a promo video for um reasons to believe we me and fuzrana had about two hours the other day we cut a promo video we were we want to do the show live and we they're making a design studio kind of like what i have behind me but smaller this is a, obviously green screen but they're actually making a full set for us for a new show i'm going to be going down to fullerton west Covina area twice a month to do the show with them um they usually get about 500 to a thousand live with my audience that should be somewhere you know in that ballpark I, we imagine but uh you know they're taking my arguments very seriously um fuzz is no idiot i mean i don't agree with them on, on some of his conclusions i don't agree with you ross obviously on some of his conclusions but they respect me enough to treat me uh, and my yeah. arguments with some of the courtesies that i don't get from the atheist community and so right. as a non-believer we are going to go on and we're going to express our views as different my, my as non-believer he's gonna be as a believer and then people are going to uh, you know call in and we're going to address these yeah. things and so they're taking it very seriously to make a whole really show around me you know? Yeah, it'll be a really interesting show, I think. Uh, Res for five says the, uh, this kind of formulaic explanation confuses me. Thankfully, you explained it better a while ago, which helps helped me understand. And that's the thing. I'm not saying don't explain it at an at an easier level. Just there's no point in the in a debate sense. There is value in in explaining it in a video or or sitting down and explaining it to people who are honestly asking you. But if somebody is just like you're wrong, and then you drop something like this, and they don't understand any of it. Well, then they can't possibly know that you're wrong, can they? Yeah, I mean, the most intellectually honest position at that point is say, look, I, I don't have the skill set to evaluate this argument. I do it the other day, uh, all the time. That's look, fair. Look, I don't have the skill set to evaluate I, I have, this. I have, a friend, <laughs> I have a friend, Alan, um, Alan Aldrich, uh, and he is brilliant. Um, and he he has arguments all the time. And he, he, he was it, wait, was it Alan? I think it was Alan. Um, I, I believe so. I mean, I got some brilliant friends, but he tagged me and he said, "Hey, what you know? What is your what is your thought on this?" And this was something he posted in the um, 
the the, the NGC Studios, the place group that they have called the, the philosophy of the place, which a lot of philosophers are in that group. And he tagged me in that too, mm -hmm. but he, he put in the Great Debate Community and tagged me. He said, what do you think about this, Steve? And I only was able to understand about that much of the argument. And I was like, look, this is from what I know, uh, what, I, what I can deduce from the argument, this is my opinion, but the rest is out of my depths. And I was, I, I told him that. I mean, I, I was like fully admitting, look, I, right. I am not capable um, or read up enough to even condemn, criticize, rebuke, or give a rejoinder to anything that you posted. I can only address the single paragraph where you talk about Gnosticism that I'm familiar with. And he was appreciative of that, right? That's all he needed. And he's like, you know, I really respect, you know, your input on these things and the fact that, you know, you, you didn't look at this particular subject, you know, you have no, I've never really looked at it before. Why I would, why would it like BS, a, you know? I need to get like dial up sounds because I feel like that's what, it, that's what my brain is doing when I start reading this. Given the general form of, <laughs> then given any uh, proposition P, you have P, V, <laughs> Which is just this love means, excluded middle. Okay, this P is true or V is not true. Yeah, let me skip ahead. I'll get to the summation of this if you guys want to see the actual, like, uh, the, the conclusion. This is the summation of the argument without the logical steps, right? Um, okay. And so basically, uh, hang on. All right, so let me make sure this is a, it's a real simple argument if you really think about it. Um, I just, I argue that if strong atheism is, believes that God does not exist, again, that's not contentious, uh, then weak atheism uh, is, does not believe God exists, which again, not contentious. Then strong theism is believes God that not does not exist. Again, not contentious. Then weak theism would be does not believe God does not exist. Again, that part, some people think is contentious. I don't know why it follows directly from logic. It's just... It's, I mean, that makes sense to me. Yeah, it's not a double negation. I've had numerous people say that's a double negation. It's not. Aren't even Ross said it was a double negation. It's not. Does not believe, quote, God does not exist. Yeah, it's like, just the only way I could see this being confusing is because they're maybe if you put a comma after well believe, you don't write it like that though yeah i know i'm just thinking because the, the, it's a it's a it's confusion coming from the way you read like in literature versus the way the logic is presented right so like you love I your commas don't this. you i have more she, commas she proofreads my here. stuff and she just like needs a comma needs a comma needs a comma and i'm like oh my god no i don't put that many commas in. i oxford comma yes if you have a list put oxford comma in but i like to write as the same way i speak so i'll tend to put a lot of additional commas to make it sound more like the way i speak so that comes across a little better on the other hand steve is terrible in <laughs> in the way he <laughs> writes something and the way like he's gotten better, got he's, better. he has gotten better Practice. but oh my god he used to be so bad well i mean when i used to write in college we, we would have like four um yeah, you submit a rough draft, which is just a blatant rough draft, right? You can have as many mistakes as, as you want. It doesn't matter. It's just a, you brain dump stuff. And then you submit, you know, a little refinement of that. And then you submit another major refinement. And then you actually give the final paper. I think uh, the last, the, one of the papers I did in English was uh, four, four <laughs> things I had to uh, do. So you, you, this is how I brainstorm, right? Um, but is this, base, this basically just means that you don't believe the, pro, the, the proposition is false. That's it. I don't believe P is false. Uh, That's yeah. all it means. Well, I just want to get to this point real quick. English doesn't make sense most of the time, so I don't know why you would expect it to translate into logic very well. Yeah, well, and, and you know, I was talking to Landon. When I was talking to Landon, I, I was trying to explain to somebody else, and me and Landon were, were talking, and I said, look, you could, you could change a lot of natural language into logic, like four different sentences can all mean one particular logical sentence, but one logical right. sentence doesn't only can translate back one way. It's, it's weird. Right. Okay, so when you write in logic, it's very specific. And again, I'm not a logician. I have basic logic skills. I mean, I am no logician. Don't ask me to do your homework. Don't ask me to do a bunch of proposition things. I might be able to do some. I go to the, my little logic proof checker and I play around with it and say, okay, look, P, R, Q, now, you know, this rule, that rule, and I like playing around with it, but I I'm not that good at it. But this is basic logic. And so my argument is very simple, is that if a weak atheist is going to submit atheism as uh, atheism, then a weak theist could submit weak theism as theism. That's it. So it, it, you have basically an atheist who 
does not hold the proposition that gods don't exist, and you have a theist that doesn't hold the proposition that God does exist. It's a mirror symmetry. That's it. And if you don't allow him to do that, it's special pleading. That's why it's called a weak atheism special pleading argument. All right. So we know we know what Steve's argument is. I think everybody in the chat pretty much knows what Steve's argument is. By now, is. they so better. What you'd think, and you presented this lovely diagram as mm -hmm. an alternate way for people to read it. This isn't like you're relying on the diagram. You're just saying, here's what it, uh, here's a visual, visualization for people who are better at visual reading and learning, so that way you can you can follow it from the top. You can you can match up what is being said and what it looks like on the diagram. Yeah, I will, well, I will put this up. This, this diagram doesn't necessarily correlate to this particular argument 100% because um, it would be confusing if you try to do that only because the second side of the graph, I don't use a negation proposition. I, I put it at actually P and the reason I do that is so I can actually show the symmetry, right? If I, if I put not P there, it wouldn't make much sense. I wanted to show the exact Venn diagram symmetry. So that's why I have if P and rather not if not P. So there's a reason right. for that. Um, but that's going to take a little bit of, of skill set to, to, for somebody to recognize, hey, Steve, you know, why didn't you have a negation of P? There's that an error. No, it's not an error. Uh, but I wanted to show that the, the logical symmetry holds. And so I said, Josh, right. has to, oh, go, go ahead. No, no, no. I'm, oh. Yeah, you wanted so to said, show that it matched. Yeah, yeah. So I said, Josh has, this is the, the debate. So Josh has to show that the logic is wrong using logic, not semantics, nor mere conceptual dichotomous relationships. Um, this is I, this I wish to be a one-to-one -one and moderated by other moderators, Christian and non-Christian, who evaluate the claims of fallacies or are not properly addressing the argument. Due to time constraints, I stipulate responses should be as brief as possible and confirmed to as much of Greece's maxims as possible. Uh, I do hold to Greece's maxims. We, we've talked about them before, you know, the quantity, quality, keep things short, keep things succinct, you know, things like that in nature. If Josh agrees to this, then I will do a one-week, one-on-one debate, just like I had with Dr. Richard Carrier on his page. My argument is on the table. Josh's turn to show any logical errors or, errors or soundness. Josh asks that every question be answered, and I agree on the condition that only one question is on the table at a time. That way you don't go down multiple rabbit holes. So I started off, and my question is very simple. Is the logic wrong? If so, where? Now, this is a yes or no question, right? I mean, or I don't know, but I mean, if you're gonna have a debate that my logic is wrong, the, the, the interlocutor should be arguing, oh, well, you, I can't Yeah, yeah, so, so you would have the answer of, uh, is, is the logic wrong, yes or no, um, and then it extrapolate, right? So you're asking a yes or no question with with space for extrapolation. Yeah, I exactly, and so it's a very simple, um, yes, let me show you why it's wrong. I, I mean, I, I softballed it to him. Um, so he, and by the way, I, I, there's a C more here. I didn't click that one. I'm sorry. I got everything else. Um, but I don't think there was much more to that. But he says, okay, now let's use your argument. If someone claims you're a pedophile, why is it always these atheists seem to, I don't know why these new, the, I'm going to call it new atheism trademark. They seem to like go to the, the extreme, right? I don't know why. I mean, it's just, it just seems ridiculous to me, but you love touching kids. Is it your burden to prove that a claim is false, or is the person's burden to make the clue, claim that proves true? First of all, as anybody can see, he didn't answer the question. Right? He didn't answer right. yes or no, and he yeah. didn't show any logic is wrong, and he's jumping completely to a different topic altogether, dealing with the burden of proof, which has no relevancy to my argument. I want people to notice in my argument, did I ever mention burden of proof? Does my argument, my, does my weak atheism, special pleading argument have anything to do with burden of proof? The answer is no, it does not, right? And so right off the bat, he doesn't answer this very simple question, right? Would you agree? And then he goes to some far extreme. Like, it's, uh, I, again, I don't know why people have used this far extremes. It, it's, it, it doesn't add anything to the dialogue, right? Yeah, no, the, okay, so you're right. They didn't answer the yes or no question or show where your logic is wrong. They went immediately into... Um, a uh, an analogy right so i i feel like they also didn't get the logic in your argument right you're, you're talking about a book that and they're talking about uh an action not a belief situation or a knowledge situation if someone claims you're a pedophile i.e you needed to explain what a pedophile was <laughs> <laughs> well, let me let me introduce you to matt bell uh, do, you, do you remember matt bell no. Matt Bell was a, a member of the Great Debate community. Uh, he was known as the, um, the something Scotsman or something. He was a contrarian from hell. He, he, oh. was, he was the ultimate contrarian. And uh, <laughs> nobody really liked it. It was called Bell End. 
And he ended up being you, Britain's worst pedophile of all time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I know who you're talking about yeah. now, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we, if you go back to way early days of the Great Debate community, we have argued with that guy for many times. Uh, and he was the one preaching, like, ethics, and, and, and atheists didn't have ethical considerations. And, and I was, I remember one time just, I was, like, pulling, uh, uh, like, going off on ethics. I was just, like, yelling at him, like, dude, you're so freaking ridiculous and uh, i knew something was wrong with him but i didn't expect that but anyways off topic so so but he didn't he didn't address the question though clearly right right All right yeah okay so he doesn't address the question then he jumps into something that doesn't like doesn't equate like a like a belief system versus versus pedophilia so if someone okay da, 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 hold on go stop 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 uh, is is it your burden of proof to prove the claim as false, or is it the person's burden who made the claim to prove it's true? Well, it, it seems like they're talking about something that wouldn't apply here it at all, because it almost ha seems like they're talking about like in a court of law, or if you were going to report somebody, which is ha th that makes no sense in regards to what the topic of the conversation. It, absolutely is. none. And by the way, I did answer this question in another. Um post and it was my my answer was that long i was like you want a second grade answer or do you want a, a college level answer and so i explained to him look there's multiple burdens of proof going on here and I, i'll get into that another time but basically there's not just one burden of proof here when people say the onus is on the person making the positive claim that's true but there's multiple burden of proofs in any discussion there's the burden of production burden of uh, persuasion burden of justification for your own particular beliefs why you rejected it there's multiple burdens going on this is the difference between somebody who just parrots what they've read about burden of proof or somebody who wants a little bit learn about epistemology and so i explained it and by the way if you really if you wanted a second grade answer is if you claim somebody committed a crime then you need to, to give evidence for it right i don't the the, the person who uh is being the like somebody says, I did something. I don't have to do anything to defend myself, right? But that's nobody's ever argued anyway. That's that's not even relevant to this, right? I mean, it's like he thinks it's a gotcha thing, right? Who would argue otherwise? But there's still burdens going on. If we're talking about legal burdens, or we're talking about epistemological burdens, right? In a legal sense, right? Yeah, you think I'm guilty of something? Show it. If I don't have to do a damn thing, right? But in a epistemological sense, if if you want me to believe something then yeah, there's a little bit different burdens going on, right? So I say this argument does not equate, uh, does not entail anything to do with burden of proof. Please address the argument being presented. Your first comment is already off topic. The question on the table, is the logic wrong? If so, where? And let's go ahead, Chess. What is, and what does he respond? Oh man, you really don't have an idea of what burden of proof is, do you? No, I've only written blogs on onus per bandai. I'm, I only have like arguments dealing with, you know, burden of proof. I don't explain it, you know, burden of justification like every other day. What do I know about it? Okay. <laughs> By the way, this is a this is a personal attack in a one-on-one -on -one debate, right? You know, I mean, this is a one-on-one -on -one debate on a on a logical argument, and he's already going into character assassination. Uh, okay, so yeah, here's the thing: he misrepresents this as a as a burden of proof issue, which is not what the debate or the argument is about. I mean, mostly your, so. Co your Venn diagram is not about the burden of proof. That's not what it's about at all. He makes it about the burden of proof. Then you explain that this ha doesn't have anything to do with the burden of proof. Yes or no? And then he goes into you don't know what the burden of proof is. Right. This isn't about the burden of proof. <laughs> yeah, so what he says is because this, I mean, this is like, it blew my mind. I was like, man, this guy's really inept. So can you read what he said? Are you there? Yeah, sorry. Uh, okay. Oh, oh man, you really don't have an idea of what burden of proof is, do you? If Ooh. someone makes a claim that... <laughs> If someone makes a, <laughs> I'm never gonna get through this. If someone makes a claim that God doesn't exist, then that is a claim and automatically gives that claim the burden of proof. And since not all atheists make this claim, then it's a straw man. What? what Again, does this have to if do with so... my argument. <laughs> what does this have to do with anything? 
nothing. Nothing. Absolutely Again, if nothing. If someone this is claims you are a pedophile, whose burden is it to prove the claim is true or false? Use your logic. You or the the claimant answer this simple and question. And by the way, three people, three idiots like this, right? They're not liking my stuff because this is the tribal group. I mean, this group is full of absolute idiots. Uh, three people thought that he's making sound rejoinders here. This is this is how scary this is, right? So. And I explained to him, I was like, look, burden of proof has nothing to do with my argument. Please read my argument again if you do not understand it prior to arguing something completely and absolutely morbidly unrelated. I mean, this is like ridiculously unrelated. And I asked him again, the, and I, get, I know I got a spelling error. The question, I, I type fast. The question on the table is, is the logic wrong? If so, where? I asked him again. Right? Yeah. And I said, I've now asked the question initially three times. Is the logic wrong? If so, where? Admin Josh continues to fail to answer the question and is trying to argue burden of proof, which my argument never, ever mentions. And uh, then, then another moderator comes in. This guy's not an admin, but he's a moderator. Um, yeah. uh, I, 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 I'm I, removing. Oh, hang on. Yeah, I, said, uh, I call I this, call this debate yeah. over. Yeah. Go ahead. I call this debate over if he cannot answer my question and argue against my actual argument. Which is fair. I'm removing comments. Members can follow by turning on notifications. Which is fair. Which I wanted. No, to that makes sense. It's just so other people aren't jumping into your debate. That's not a. That right. makes sense. Right. That's that's totally a thing that that happens. That's on purpose. That's right. as it should be. Yeah. And by the way, TJ didn't read my argument, so he had no. He didn't even know what my argument was. But he was like, he, he at least said, "Hey, look." And I and I think I know this guy, but he's like. Uh, yeah, nobody should be jumping in on this as a one-on-one -on -one debate because there was people jumping in and he moved the comments. And there were dumb comments like, oh, Steve, prove your God. That, what the fuck, man? I was like, that has nothing to do with anything. All right, so I said I call for a forfeit by jo from Josh. He says, I said, I failed. To, he failed to provide an answer to my first question. He has argued about the burden of proof, which is not even mentioned in my argument, nor has any relevancy to it whatsoever. TJ says, he can, he can point out weaknesses in your argument, though. For example, if the burden of proof is misplaced, that, the, that, that can be addressed by either side. But I'm like, my argument has absolutely not about burden of proof. I have no argument here about burden of proof. Right? So I asked for a forfeit call. He says, it doesn't have to specifically about it for a proponent to address it. Yeah, it kind of does. I mean, if I'm arguing X and he's arguing Z, that's not a debate. Right? And it's like, Show me in my argument where BOP has anything to do with my argument. My question was, is logic wrong? Because he asserted my logic is incorrect. Please show us where I have any argument about the burden of proof of my argument. My logic is my burden of proof of my argument, right? If, if somebody says, well, what's your argument? Here's my argument. And they said, well, what's your burden of proof? That is my burden of proof. I showed you logic. What, is, what else do you think a burden of proof is? If I give you a logical argument, that is my burden of proof. It's a logical argument. Res for two says there are stupid people in every group. Yeah, that, well, <laughs> that's true, Rez, but in certain groups, there's a higher percentage of them, right? Well, Not it's all also groups are like, created it's, equal. it's one thing to have stupid people in your group. It's another thing to be stupid enough to give those stupid people power. Uh, fair point, yeah. <laughs> fair point. <laughs> another level of stupid. That's another it's level like an of onion. Dumb. It's got layers, and the yeah, more you I mean, peel back, the more stupid you find, and I mean, then you start to cry. I mean, look who I give mod power in my live chat nowadays. I mean, what am I thinking? But whatever. I mean, I take a chance. Um, Look at all the women. Yeah, I know too. Yeah, Steve's a misogynist, or whatever. You know, he's got he's got two mods that are both women. Um, I'm gonna let Sweet get the next one. I've been, I've been we we've got a we've got a troll popping in on on multiple accounts. I'm, I'll let Sweet Shocker. do the next one. Shocker! Shocker! Yeah. Surprise! The surprise of absolutely nobody. And by the way, the two women that have mods, they pretty much control my channel. I just here for the, I just look good. That's all I have to anymore. I have no other things to do. But, <laughs> Michael know. says, Steve, if you say there is no teapot orbiting the sun between Mars and Jupiter, then it's up to you to search the entire asteroid belt <laughs> to prove this wrong. Ha, check making. You, you, know, you know, it's funny you mentioned that, uh, Michael. I'm going to be doing, a, a, I'm going to try to do a show on Russell's teapot. Um, because I'll, like a lot of people misunderstand Russell's teapot. I don't think Russell may even makes a good argument. I don't think he even comes to a correct conclusion if he if he even has a conclusion. Because his conclu he doesn't really have a conclusion in his argument. He's actually just throwing it out there and letting other people kind of decide about it on a on a claim that's considered to be unfalsifiable. But there have been multiple papers uh, Lynn's against also Russell. Makes a, Lynn's also makes a point that says he automatically came to the conclusion you were arguing about burden of proof. Right, that's yeah. true. But uh, he, uh, there have been multiple people that have argued that um, 
Russell's teapot, uh, you, 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 you actually should hold the position that the teapot doesn't exist. I hold that position. I'm not agnostic on the teapot. I, I, think, it, I think it's nonsensical to be agnostic on the teapot based upon what we know. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's not a, it is it gonna teapot is not a good argument. How long is it going to be before NASA like actually just drops it? Or it'll I be thought Elon about Musk. that. He's just going to drop off a teapot. I really <laughs> thought about that one time. I'm like, the one time NASA goes up there just to screw with people and say, you know what, we're going to put a teapot up here. Um, yeah. Just, just yeah. They're going to call it, you just know, the Russell people. launch. I think it'd be hilarious, yep. but that hasn't been done yet. So I think we have overwhelming evidence based upon what we know about the space program that Russell's teapot is false. I hold the position to be false. But uh, yeah, Russell doesn't really make a great argument in that. But anyways, moving on. Uh, I said, uh, let me ask you this. In my OP, does it have anything meant to do with the burden of proof? If no, then he clearly forfeits the debate as he's too far off topic to continue. Um, is it can to be, uh, me, uh, and I give an example. It is can to be arguing moral realism and him countering with modal anti-realism. Completely different topics, right? Moral realism and, and modal anti-realism are unrelated. I don't think he understands my argument well enough to debate it, right? Uh, anyways, I click. I I, I was uh, I was done. I was like, I declare the debate over by forfeit, and he clearly has failed to address my argument. If others wanted to message me directly, they they can, right? And go ahead if you want to read what Josh says again. This is how dumb the guy is. I mean, the guy's just a brick. He just does not get it. No. Um, yes, it does, because you are claiming that atheists claims that God doesn't exist. That's not even you my claim in my argument. Everything to make to make a Rube Goldberg contraption to arrive at your conclusion. Do you not Logic. understand what you post? Again, answer the question using your table, and then back to the pedophile example, which we already explained does not really apply here. So is you bur oh, so is you burden of proof the claim wrong? <laughs> Gary level. This is Gary yeah, level. Yeah, I mean, I write bad too, so I'm not, but I don't like Gary. Nobody writes bad as Gary. So is you burden to prove the claim wrong, or is it the claimant's burden to prove it true? You or the claimant, simple question. That is the, uh, that is the answer on why your table is flawed. Uh, Steve is tap, it, tap dancing on the question. You or the claimant. He didn't answer your first question. How is this if even a rejoinder, though? If he didn't answer though? your very first question at the beginning, how, why, like, what is... How, but I mean, I mean, how is this even a rejoinder, though? Right? I mean, it's not even... A, it has nothing to do with my argument, right? So it's not something that uh, I need to answer, right? And I did answer him in another post. Right, I was like, fine, you know, I'll answer your question because it's ridiculous. I, this is base level new atheism trademark. I mean, this is somebody who has no understanding of the topics that is just going to parrot what they throw out. You know, somebody to throw out there thinking they're making a good argument when they're not, right? So, because clearly he didn't address anything I had to say, and and so I tell, I say, uh, I will take your forfeit of this debate. Um, where did I put this? Uh, let's see here. I will take your forfeit of this debate. I have a question on the table. You failed to answer it after three times. You are begging that you are, excuse me, you're arguing a burden of proof, which is not even mentioned in my argument. I call this debate forfeited by you and, and people can judge it for themselves. We have 150 people watching. One person, if you are one person, right, that thinks that he won this debate by addressing my argument, by answering my first question, showing my logic is wrong, or even addressing anything in my argument, please leave a comment in the, in the description and let me know because I think you're an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but go ahead. Uh, I'll, I'll discuss it with you. Um, if you're, you know, somebody who's worthy to have a discussion of this, people I won't ever talk to. But uh, yeah, so I was like, this is ridiculous. So he goes on and it starts posturing. You want to read it? You ask why uh, you tape. Why do you make me read this? I don't know. Like, you, you, speak, ask... you speak Gary. <laughs> do I? Oh. You're the Gary Whisperer. People have no idea who Gary is anymore. He's, he's, uh... he, this guy, that guy is so, what is it, uh, uh, irrelevant that people don't even know who Gary is and even is any longer. Okay, you asked why you table is flawed. I gave you an answer. Now answer the question. This is the answer. Now if you can't understand it, not my problem. Now use your table for this. Back to the pedophile thing. So is you burden to prove the claim wrong, or is it the claimant's burden to prove it? He's just repeating himself. Right. And it's completely irrelevant. But again, any idiot can answer this question. 
if you're in a court of law and you're accused, the defendant doesn't have to do shit. It has to, the prosecuting attorney is, uh, they have to make their case, right? Who argues otherwise? This is, this is not even first grade stuff. That's kindergarten level. Do you want me to see if I can find the tweet from now, Gary? Now, I haven't seen my, my, my proof, my, the proof that I use is not some kind of high level stuff. It's, you know, first, second year college kind of stuff, but it's certainly not kindergarten. He's on kindergarten level. And he's like, this was a short debate. You Thank lost you, badly. And I even put on my page, I was like, look, I, the shortest written debate in history is like 34 minutes. Um, but uh, he's <laughs> like, yes, yeah, yes, it is about the burden of proof since you claim that atheists claim that God doesn't exist. Irrelevant! <laughs> that's, not, that's not even in my argument. I just put strong, I even differentiate between strong and weak for that very point. <laughs> you know, if you're, look, how many atheists disagree on, if somebody says that they believe there are no gods, what is that? Gary. Oh. <laughs> if somebody says there are no gods, who's not going to call them an atheist? I think that that qual that is necessary and sufficient for atheism in any context, right? If you say, look, gods don't exist, that that who's going to say that's not atheist? I, I don't know who would, would say that. That seems weird to me, right? What are they going to call that person, a theist? But, uh, Whatever. <laughs> yeah, but he goes on, and he's like... Um, now to reiterate, uh, uh, now last time, uh, one single rule that was the questions would be addressed. So I'm asking for the debate mod TJ to force my opponent to answer the question based on this one single rule. Um, first of all, I had the first question on the table, right. which he never answered. Yep. Okay. Correct. And his, and his question had absolutely no relevancy. And, and in my OP, I said that they have to be on point. They have to be, you know, dealing with the argument. You can't ask me stuff that's completely unrelated. That's I even put that in yeah, there. Yeah, because he's, he thinks that your argument is about burden of proof because the result of agreeing with your argument would mean that atheist would have a burden of proof. However, that's still not what the argument is. That's a, that's a consequence of the argument being correct. Yep. And my and by the way, I, I, I as a whole separate argument, uh, I put on my Twitter the other day, all atheists have a burden of proof. doesn't matter whether they're strong or weak. That's epistemology. If you don't like it, whatever. But, you know, that's demonstrable. You can read Michael Martin who actually advocated for negative atheism. And even he said negative atheists have a burden of proof. This is the guy that actually was one of the, the, the leading people that wanted to change atheism from the positive case to a negative with Anthony Flew and George uh, Smith and uh, Stephen Boulevard. Michael Martin was a pretty smart philosopher. I don't know why, I think he got some stuff wrong, but even he acknowledged that there's a burden of proof to be had there. And so when you got somebody like sure. Matt Dillahunty who says, oh, well, Steve's wrong about that. You know, if I don't accept a claim or don't believe you, I don't have a burden of proof. Where's your citation? Who's your expert on that opinion? Because everything I've read is completely contrary to that. Even Michael Martin, who, again, wrote in a chapter on negative atheism, that if you withhold affirmation, that you still have a burden of proof to, to, to show why you did not accept the claim. Right. He worded it a little right. bit differently, but that's what's his point. Yeah, basically, if you if you hold a position, no matter what side of the position, you have reasons for holding that position. Now, your reasons can be good, or they can be bad, or they could not be convincing to other people. That doesn't just because they can't convince other people doesn't necessarily make them bad reasons. Yeah, because a lot of this stuff is very personal. So that like it's it's not that it's not that big of a deal. I don't get it. Yep. People get all really super duper up and up in arms about this, and it because they've been indoctrinated you, by you don't you know, really need to. Well, they've been indoctrinated. Atheists don't have a burden of proof. And then Richard Carey read my blog, and he did a blog post on it, and he he mm -hmm. he agreed with me in a very passive aggressive kind of way because that's Carrier, very passive aggressive <laughs> kind of way. And then he then he he took it to an extreme, but he's like, you know, Steve is right. All atheists have a burden of proof, right? Negative, positive, doesn't matter. He agrees with me on that part, but then Carrier takes it one step further and says, but that burden of proof has already been met. Now, I know Malpass, and I know Ozzy, and I know other people, Burt Poole, and a few other people got on him on that and said, no, no, you can't, you can't just by fiat say that the burden of proof has been met. This is philosophy, not science, right? In science, you can make that argument. If I say, look, evolution, uh, every theory has met this burden of proof, that's why it's a confirmed model. If you think it's wrong, you have the onus to demonstrate that it's incorrect. I don't have an onus to demonstrate evolution is true to anybody. It's, a, it's accepted. It's already met its burden of proof in science. That is how that works. It, philosophy is not the same way. And what Carrie is trying to do is say, well, uh, atheism has already met its burden of proof. Therefore, a, all an atheist has to do is say, look, 
I don't believe or I believe God doesn't exist. And you ask him why, and they say, well, because it's already met his burden of proof. It's not a justification. That doesn't explain anything. It doesn't, doesn't, that doesn't, right. that doesn't explain anything at all. It's like, well, it already has. Okay, well, how? Right. If you can't explain the how, like you, all you've done is push back an, an additional question. That doesn't really. Uh, yeah. K- uh, Kimo said, uh, this is the lure of the lack theist mindset. Imagine thinking you're intellectually honest about something without needing to justify your point of view. Right. And that's, that's, what, like, I, and that's what I wrote on my Twitter. <laughs> By the way, my, my Twitter post the other day, it's, it already has like more likes than anything I've had in the last couple months. Um, and, and it does exactly it. And my argument is where it's very simple. Um, how do you how do you justify having a rational position if you don't have a burden of proof? It's it's explain that to me. Ask any atheist out there that says, "Well, I'm a burden of proof." Then how do you justify your position? And I and I look at this way, guy. Look at this guy swinging in here. Oh my god! I just read ahead. But, but Can wait, you just quick. answer the question instead of doing all this tap dancing? Real quick, I I am now going to be helping theists to argue against atheists. Since atheists don't want my help, screw them. I'm, I'm going to go. I, I'm literally going to help a, a theist. Uh, argue against atheists if, 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 if because I, I don't have any allegiance to atheists or theists. I don't care. I want critical You're thinking. That, does, that doesn't mean that I'm not going to call out theists. I, I got an S.J. Thomason the other day for a bad mm-hmm. argument. It's just a horrible argument, right? And I showed and that the it's logic not was about, wrong. It's not about what people believe. I, people don't understand this. About I, I and and I'm like this too. I don't care if you're right or wrong. I care about how you present right. it. I don't give a shit what you believe or don't believe. Just don't say dumb, bad argument things because it's dumb and bad. Like, <laughs> who cares what you actually personally believe? Who cares that, like, it, it doesn't matter. It's not relevant. What matters is that you, whether or not your argument is good or bad if you're going to be engaging in discussion. Now, if you don't want to engage in discussion, that's fine. You can keep that shit to yourself. There, nobody has a problem with that. But you can't You can't be going around being like, well, you're wrong because, because reasons. burden of proof about something that has nothing to do, like I said, which this person does not understand. And clearly, like, a bunch of the people didn't actually understand yeah, with, even the even the even the mod is like, how about addressing the first question and then resolving the burden of proof issue? So yeah, answer right, the first that's question. Right. So even the mod is saying, hey, you've got to answer the first question, then maybe we can move on to that. And this guy comes swinging in here completely against what the mod just said, and right? Being like all this tap dancing. Wait, maybe maybe actually, let's give this person the benefit of the doubt. Maybe this person is actually talking about this other guy, this Josh guy. <laughs> maybe he's not talking about you. Well, no, no, he's very clear. Answer the first question and then resolve the burden of proof. Um, but Wiz says, I'm 100% behind you on that, Steve. Give Theus some serious fuel for the new atheist. It's making me look bad. Yeah. And like I said, I, wh- when I go on uh, Reasons to Believe as a non believer, uh, I'm going to be giving thousands of a- Christians and theists out there ammunitions against atheists. Um, I, I, I think it's going to help uh, the atheist community in the long run. But if they wanted to say, look, you're, you know, you're defecting to the other side, that's not true because I'm going to be arguing against the theists as well. They want me to come up with bad arguments. They want me to show bad arguments that Christians have as well, right? They're not, yeah. they're not wanting well, me on the show is... because I'm, I'm a theist. They want me on the, as a non-believer to challenge right. them. Yeah, WizBiz makes a really good point. It says, 100% behind you on that, Steve. Gives theists some serious fuel against new atheists. It makes me look bad. <laughs> the thing is, is that, yes, having these are, like... The thing is, is that Steve presenting these arguments does give fuel to theists, but that's kind of assuming the theists wouldn't have figured it out on their own at some point eventually. Yeah, well, I gotta admit, most of my arguments <laughs> are derivative. I, I mean, they're, they're de novo in some ways, the way I've structured them, but I'm not the first person to run a, an argument similar to this weak atheism a special pleading argument. I've just formulated it, and I've named it, and I've actually put it as a special pleading argument, which has never been done before that I've seen. Uh, Baby Jesus had a serious question and also another question. I'm assuming both of the questions are serious. One of them is, would not the burden of proof be simply, I do not believe in the existence of gods, stated simply, serious question. Clearly not. No, because we'd have to demonstrate why. Yeah, what is it, why, what is it that you've held? Why don't you believe? What Was the evidence not good enough? For example, I'll give you an example. Right. Uh, and I'll go back to my, my, my famous litmus thing. 0.99 repeating was one, because it's objective. And I say, hey, Chesh, uh, 0.9 of my mm-hmm. equals a one, and I give you a proof, and the proof has an error in it. And you say, right. well, Steve, I don't believe you. I say, why don't you believe me? Well, because you have an error in your proof here. Oh, there you go. Now you have and reasons not to error. believe me. You right. you've, met, you've have sufficiently explained your position why you don't believe me. It's that simple. 
Yeah, it's not it's not complicated, but you, you, there is a the the burden of proof on atheists is essentially can't just say oh well I don't believe or oh I'm not convinced. You have to explain why you aren't convinced because just saying you don't you're not convinced doesn't actually give any kind of you need to explain why. If you can't explain why then you're kind of running into the same sort of trouble that a theist runs into. Yeah, it's epistemically uh, because dishonest. God. Yeah, because right? God. It's like, it doesn't really have Because work. reasons. And the other question was, what is a new atheist? A uh, new atheist, oh, um, go look at one of my other videos. Oh, I, I, I don't know if I put it on my blog yet. I have a, a draft for it, and i got to finish it. But we put 10 things that kind of are indicative of new atheist, right? If you guys remember that. But a new atheist is somebody who generally kind of just holds to uh, Dawkins, uh, um, Hitchens, um, Sam Harris, and uh, Daniel Dennett. And they basically all seem to have things in common by the argument by meme. They don't understand uh, fallacies very well. They just throw out fallacies all the time. Um, they're, they're a very specific group of, of white belt atheists who think that they're actually arguing something productively when they quite, quite literally have no concept of a lot of the arguments on the table, but they think they're doing an right. exceptional job just by quoting Dawkins or something. It doesn't work that way. So, so I'm not the one that coined that, by the way. I think actually got a really interesting, I, I think uh, Baby Jesus is actually really interesting because they, they seem to be a little bit newer to the conversation. It might be good to pull them in at some point for when we do our call-in shows. Well, that's clearly um, a troll so account. They're trying to, I don't know who they they're are. trying to answer, right? So, quote, I have not found sufficient evidence for the existence of, uh, of God. Uh, Okay, like, but that's, does, that, but that's, does that work? But that's not a justification no, because either. You're not, no, you're not showing what is it. What is not sufficient? What is it you're yes. missing? What you, what you would need? What about the evidence that you have been presented doesn't work? That's the why. You're still not presenting the why. It's the vacuous. why is what's important here. Look, look, if I okay, people that know a little bit of logic will kind of tell you that you don't get any new information from deduction. You get it from induction, right? So Sherlock Holmes right. wasn't doing deduction. He was actually doing induction. So when you do something, you're just using what information you have. You're rearranging it to try to come to a conclusion from premises you already know. Induction tries to gather new information, right? So if you tell me something no, like... I thought that... Wait, hold on. Sherlock Holmes? Because Sherlock Holmes doesn't get new information. He gets the information he already has. No, no, he does induction. He has a ridiculously high amount of information that he has in his backlog, like he's, knowing about... He's able, make, he's able to legit. make conclusions from... Uh, it wouldn't be 100% valid, right? So it's not a deductive argument. He, he He's able to in, say, okay, because of this and this, this is more likely the case. Those are inductive oh, type okay. arguments. So, All right. So when, um, so when somebody says, like, I, I, I don't have enough, uh, I don't have sufficient information. Or, no, you know what? Better yet. If they say, I don't believe because I'm not convinced, right? What does that actually tell anybody? If, if they were convinced, they would believe, right? So it's deductively inferred. That if somebody's not convinced, they don't believe. I can, I just know that by them saying that. They're not telling me anything new, right? By telling me I don't believe because I'm not convinced. It's self-evident that they don't believe because they're not convinced. Because if they're convinced, they would believe, right? You can do it in Mohs Tolens, Tolens form, right? So by by simple deductive Mohs Tolens, you can show that that would be the case. It doesn't tell me what your justification is for not believing, though, right? But anyways, we're a little bit off topic. But yeah, that's not that's vacuous just to say, look, I, I'm not convinced, therefore I don't believe, or I haven't had sufficient evidence. Now, there is evidential agnosticism which says, look, I don't have enough data to to look at and properly evaluate the proposition. That's a little bit more specific, right? That's somebody who's saying, look, uh, I, I, I need, in order for me to evaluate the proposition, I need to have data that I can evaluate. For example, in the gumball analogy, right? When you have even and odd, if you have no reason to believe they're even or odd, you, your best position to be rational, I think, is an evidential agnostic on it. To just say, look, the zero data agnostic would be, I have, I have no reasons at all to believe they're even, or do I have, or do I have reasons to believe they're odd? There's nothing there to evaluate, right? So if I just say they're even, it has to be a guess, and guesses, by definition, are not justifiable, right? It's a guess. So... In that particular case, evidential agnosticism would be the way to go. Uh, but that's not what some of the people say. They don't, they don't argue it that way. And so they, I think when they have to justify, they need to bring more to the table than merely, oh, well, I don't believe because I'm not convinced. Or, you know, I, I don't believe your evidence. Well, why? What, what's insufficient about the evidence? But anyways, can we, let's get back to this side check. Um, but you want me to read this? Oh, I got it. Um, uh, baby Jesus is... Um... 
So um, I don't know how to say their name. The the person that SJ was saying that they were going to hell when they died what, after he, after he died. Oh. Do you remember that? Yes. It's their widow. That's okay. Who it is. All right. Uh, well, and by the way, I did condemn SJ for that. And I, I by the way, I'll shit on SJ all the time. But uh, I, I rather have I, I rather have a conversation with SJ uh, than I will like you know Patel right because he's just a disgusting human being. Now I think that SJ does, does some vile things, but you know. Why, why stop conversation with somebody like SJ who I want to call out on those vile things? And maybe she'll she'll learn from them, right? When she made a logical argument the other day and she had a affirming the consequent fallacy, I was the first person to point it out to her, said your logic is flawed. You have P implies Q, Q there for P, which is a clear logical fallacy. It's not a rule of inference. Of course, what does she do? What does she do though? She doesn't acknowledge that. She's like, well, because this, this, and this, I'm like, no. Oh, uh, God, that was ridiculous. Yeah, I was like, SJ, let me explain this to you. Once somebody shows your logic is invalid, game over. You're I done. think that there's a difference between SJ in that, yes, she says very awful things, and she should be shit on for saying those very awful things. Like, she should get pushback, and she should take crap for that. Um, on the other hand, she also is one of those people who will actually have the conversation and isn't a lost cause, like uh, whatever his name is. Like that that dude is just a lost cause. Oh yeah, there he's, is, he's reprehensible. Like, there is no benefit, but with SJ, because she can, act, although she is very horrible for saying those things you can reach her audience through that conversation. So there's there's a benefit there to still have the conversation despite how horrible some of the things she says. Yeah, she is. did on a and live stream. You can call her out on those horrible things. Absolutely. We And I went on her stream the other day and she still was trying to sort of trying to argue the, the logic. I think like Brian Stevens was there. And yeah, I was like, <laughs> I was like, come on. And this is what I'm saying. Other people can notice this too. It's like, SJ, stop trying to argue the logic. Again, this is what Matt um, Slick does. When I showed, when, when first it was uh, Alex Malpass, then it was the uh, 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 theoretical bullshit, Scott Clifton, and then it was myself, we all showed that his logic was wrong, right? Or just, it was it was flawed, the way he does a disjunction. And right. uh, he still tried to save this tag argument. And when he asked Alex Malpass, what do I got to do to reformulate this kind of thing? Malpass said it brilliantly. He said, you can't. Yeah, it doesn't work. You can't. You're, you're dead in the water, if I'm not mistaken, is what he said. Uh, or something okay. to that effect. It's because once you show that the logic is invalid, you need to, you need to reformulate. There's no other ways about it. You cannot get around that. Um, so, oh my goodness, what are those people messaging me? Um, <laughs> yeah. And by the way, yeah. Uh, okay, so I'm going to read the next bit. Yeah, please. Okay. Uh, sure, bud. If you like humiliating yourself, be my guest. All this has proven is that you are weaseling out of the debate, shitting on the chessboard and claiming you won, when all you did was create a straw man and lame and useless Rube Goldberg <laughs> argument. And you can't even answer a simple question on why your table is flawed, because it will show you how it is flawed. Be sure to include this comment when you share oh, it. absolutely. Well, we did. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, did, I guess I didn't hit see more. What I told him was, I, this is, that's why I asked him, can I, can I show this? Um, again, mm -hmm. I, I tried to get as much as I could to the video, and I, I didn't cap that. But I was asking him, do you mind if I share this? And he said, yeah, it's fine. But, I mean, he didn't show my logic was flawed. Uh, he asked in, irrelevant questions that had nothing to do with the argument. Uh, yep. There's nothing Rube Goldberg about it. This is just basic logic. Um, I can't answer a simple He's question. He's calling it Rube Goldberg because it looks so complicated. Yeah, to him. <laughs> right? Um, I mean, it doesn't apply, but <laughs> yeah, to him, it's got, but most people is like, yeah, this is okay. everybody that knows logic has checked this said, yeah, I don't see a problem with it. Uh, Barney Terspell brought up a couple of different things, but I don't think he's saying it's wrong. I think he just wanted more clarification on it. But anybody else who knows logic, not one right. person has said the logic's wrong on it. Right. I mean, if there's an issue with the Venn diagram, I'm fine with that. But the logic is, is sound. I mean, it's just, I, I don't, I don't see a way that they can defeat that. But that's why I'm testing these things. This is why I put these arguments out there. I want people to try to poke holes in them, right? But not one person, not one so far has said, oh, yeah, your logic is wrong here. Like, not one. Okay, and I would think that I've had this argument for quite some time. One, at least one person would try, would actually say, hey, your logic is wrong here. But everybody that knows logic says, yeah, I don't see a problem with it. So uh, Everybody say goodbye to Randolph Richardson. He has to leave. Oh, hey, Randolph. Goodbye. Bye. Regards. Yeah, peace. All around. Um, and... Uh, Okay, so that's kind of the end of this. I, I said, uh, I, 
I said, I now have permission to share a one-to-one -one debate from a private group. I will screen cap this and make this debate public, okay? Why would they kick you after this, though? Oh, oh, well, because I had posted, because uh, he posted something, he posted this long thing and just vilified me, right? Because um, he's an admin, right? And so I just posted something, like, comical. I was like, somebody had asked me why I'm in this group, and I posted something from Feynman, which is a quote from Feynman or Einstein. They both kind of said it. Uh, basically, uh, if you can't explain something simple enough to a fifth grader, you don't understand it yourself. And I said, well, I'm in this group to test my stuff to try to explain it to a fifth grader or six-year-old, I think I used, right? Because they're all idiots in this group, right? It was a, it was a joke, uh, but he's just like, oh, you're just spamming now. I was like, oh, get the fuck out of here. I was like, you're, you're Where just... Where was it spam? You made a separate post vilifying me and I laughed it, at it, you for it. In a group <laughs> where all they do is show people <laughs> meme, argument by meme. It's all spam. They have no intelligent conversations in there. They're all idiots. Right? I mean, it's just like no intelligent conversation in there. This is about the most intelligent. People have told me, hey, it's, I even had one person in the, in, in the first post I had said, hey, Steve, thank God that you're in this group kind of thing. He's like, this group needs somebody to really shake things up and to, you know, provide some actual intelligent debates in here. Because nobody ever does. Right. It's, okay. it's, so to sum this up, you made an argument about cla essentially about classification and the logic structure of that classification. Then this guy goes off about you, you ask one question, yes or no, and it, to explain it. It, it. Where's the logic in this flawed it, or is it flawed? Yes or no. And if it is explain where it is. Correct. He then went on about burden of proof, which had nothing to do with what you had said because, and the reason he got confused at best I'm, I'm, I'm being nice and saying he got confused and isn't just a shithead. Um, is because the result of, the, of agreeing with that logic, a, a passive um, consequence of it, is that atheists would then have some kind of burden of proof because they are making a claim. Right. So instead of actually arguing the logic, he went on to argue about burden of proof, which had nothing to do with the actual argument itself, because he was so scared and concerned about atheists having to have a burden of proof that he couldn't handle the consequence of the logic without addressing the logic, and therefore could not address the logic himself. He got so blinded by his fear of, the bur of atheists having a burden of proof that he could not address why the logic of them having burden of proof wouldn't have, like is is flawed in any way yeah and that's a good summation uh so this is what the lDR the... oh uh, yeah then he got super mad and butthurt about it and it kicked, kicked me from, from the group, group. <laughs> yeah I, love it. I mean look I'm in 45 50 groups I guess I'm in a lot of groups so this is no big deal the people that are in these groups are in uh, groups I don't are think in. you actually care that you got kicked no, outside of the, uh, the principle of the matter I, and I, demonstrate I literally this have been happened. in dozens and dozens yeah. of groups with the same people I mean if you look at our friends list we match like 55 70 80 100 people sometimes um it's yeah. not the people in that group uh, it doesn't get many comments. They, you know, what if seven seven people argue on it? I mean, that's not a large reach, so I don't care. Um, this is, but this is why that nobody does anything in that group. These these admins are just incompetent. Um, and but if I really wanted to have a decent discussion, I post these things also in a philosophy group that's just for philosophy, and we have actual real dialogue on these things, right? And so far, nobody's you know assailed this particular argument, but we at least talk about. It. They're like, well, "What do you mean by this?" Okay, well, how about this? Yeah, we don't see a problem with that. We, I get positive feedback, right? Right. Uh, um, Theo Noncog is asking, so why go into such a group? Like, what's the, the point? The, well, to test being... to test these arguments out, right? I mean, I give people the uh, benefit of the doubt. Say, look, if you think it's wrong, let's let's talk about it, uh, and. Maybe don't make somebody's... the assumption that these these groups are going to act in this manner. We we go I try in not to, with, but... with a with a positive at least. Yeah, you might think in the back of your mind that this probably isn't going to go. Oh, well, I know it won't go well, but hoping hope... that you'll be able to test out the arguments or have decent conversation. We don't assume that people are going to act like this, even though that does tend to be. If the case. one person learns from it, then that's fine. Because I mean, and I posted that before. I actually the other day somebody said, "Hey, you know what? I've really got this," and I posted. I was like, "Look, if one person got this, then they, I, you know." I'm happy, yeah. but this guy here is still in that group, and he posted what the ad that Josh had said. Okay, so this is just oh, this is what the, this, this is what, what Josh the guy said. In. Yeah. Oh, oh, this is gonna be good. Yeah. So this is the thing that you said that you commented on under that got you kicked. No, 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 okay, I, okay, I, okay. I, no, no, no. I just saw this th this morning. Um, Eric had posted it, 
um, and and basically said this is what he has this is what he's saying in the group. Now let's go through this, and I'm going to address it as we go. So go ahead and start it. Okay. And, and I'm gonna, I'm, set, okay. Go ahead. And this is what. Then I'll stop Eric it when there's is, a problem. Where does where does it start being this Josh guy right uh, at the beginning? Right, right at the very beginning. Okay, to set the record straight, this is not the first time I debated this man. Stop. Really? Who the hell are you, Josh? I know every name of everybody I've ever debated. I will. I could tell you everybody I've ever dated. Uh, dated. <laughs> debated. Dated. I mean, probably both. Probably both. No, I couldn't. I. I but uh, I. I mean, where? I don't even know this guy. Where the hell have I debated him before? And by the way, I've only done two written debates, one on ones. Only Maybe two. under another name. Richard Carrier and then this guy. About, I don't do him that often. I don't think I've ever done about, that one. Maybe he's talking about a conversation on some other. Forum. That's not a debate. But that's not a debate. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> very very sloppy use of the term. I used. I, I've said this for years. <laughs> I used the, the term debate in a more formal setting. You know, not to have to be like right. super formal, like you know, I mean, Craig, like modern day debate. But if you're gonna have an interlocutor and we're gonna have a, a, a subject that we're debating, um, and it's gonna be the topic of the of the of the debate, you know, discussion, that's more of a debate. And I've only had those with very specific people: Wayne Fillmore, Drew Pierceism, uh, Pierce, Patient Beard, the Duke, uh, Snake was right, uh, stated clearly, uh, John Perry, um, and that's pretty much almost all of them, isn't it? I don't think I've really debated anybody else. Uh, Richard Carrier. Um, but yeah, so anyways, that's that's as bogus. I, I mean, that's his, come on. He's, he's trying to, to boost himself up to be like, oh, I've debated this clown before, Steve. Really? Come on. I had to ask when it started being Josh to make sure I could do the voice. Yeah. He was already obnoxious in the first debate. And I was informed that he he trash talked me on his YouTube channel after the debate. I didn't watch the video. I don't care, and I am not interested in what the man does outside the group. I, I don't know who this guy is. I don't know what video he's talking about. Yeah, no idea. D I mean, can you link I it? Can you link your first debate? <laughs> yeah, I mean that's. Uh, That'd be I, nice. I guess, maybe some other. Maybe he's patient beard, but that would have been a modern debate. And I didn't, and I like that guy. I didn't talk crap about him uh so i don't know who, he's not the duke he's not I think is right he's not stated clearly I, I don't know who this guy is i don't think we even really talked shit about snake i think we just no, said that he was, he's he talking was shit fine. about me he was in over his head a little bit yeah but he's talking shit about me but by the way i do have oh, a has he been talking shit oh yeah Aww. um but I, i'm gonna be uh so cute. i'm gonna be on modern day debate again for part two on that on the second but i'm taking a totally different approach the first approach was, hey, look, you think I'm wrong. Let's go over it. By the way, I didn't know anything about a 10-minute introduction. Uh, I did, wasn't told that 10 minutes before like ten minutes before we went on air. I was like, I didn't, I'm not preparing anything. He says I'm wrong. I was going to just tell me. right? So that's why I didn't have any opener. Uh, but he had nothing to say. And so I just dominated I the conversation. I know what the video is that they're talking about. Can somebody please? I, Eric, Eric, this Eric person, can you please send him a message and ask what video it is? I don't think he knows. <laughs> uh, but anyways, go, yeah. go on. No, I mean, like, I want Eric to send Josh a message. Oh, okay. I'll message him later. Okay. Um, the man is obsessed like a maniac with one topic and one topic only. Quote, atheists have the burden of proof. Has he ever read my blog? That's like one of many different things I talk about. This is Caffeine one thing. Corner, Defcom one science. This topic gets brought up a lot because other people bring it up right. a lot. So it has to come up a lot, which is usually talking about the more nuances of the situation rather than the actual argument itself, which is, you know, kind of annoying, but yeah, you, I don't know where whatever. you get this idea. That's like, like uh, about, a single focus. Cyber bullying stuff that we talk about uh, whenever there's non sequitur shit going on. Uh, David, K David Silverman on the other day, burn proof never David came up. David Silverman was on, no, never came never up. Came up. Uh, oh, man, that was a really good okay. show. If people haven't watched that with David Silverman, go watch it. It was really good. I, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I'm going to be on his channel yeah. next month, actually. I had somebody asking me what the difference was, like, like what the difference was on, like, on my channel in a really inappropriate place to be asking. And then they, they did some, they pulled some bullshit. And I was like, yeah, I'm not having this conversation. You're clearly not here to have to actually ask. 
And they were like, what, if you you have such a problem with Joe Biden, why are you okay with the, David Silverman? And I was like, do I really <laughs> need to explain the difference between Whoa. David Silverman and Joe Biden? He's like, yeah, but you talked to David Silverman. Are you saying that I wouldn't talk to Joe Biden I if would, he came uh, onto a show? Joe, Joe come There's on. only sure. one person. There was only one person that I know of that I would not have a conversation with um, live on air because I don't want to be anywhere near that person. And that is Jordan Peterson. I don't, and that has nothing that. to do with whether or not there are any allegations against but, but him. If, and if, nothing at all. If the Joe Biden wanted make... to come on, we would let him. <laughs> come yeah, on. exactly. I was like, and then the response was, "Well, I wouldn't let him on. I, like, I wouldn't. I I'm would like, let okay, Trump on it's for you. What the yeah. hell is this? What are you I, talking I, about? I, I, my channel has always been. Explain to me I'll here have just about in anybody text, on in, a, in a YouTube. Yeah, explain to me here in te in text on a YouTube comment in two hundred characters or less the differences between. <laughs> how you're basically not a hypocrite by disliking and railing on Joe Biden for being a sexual predator and not and be and there and being on a show with David Silverman. And by the way, the last show we had David Silverman, he addressed all that stuff. We asked him about it. And by the yeah, way, yeah, that's why. So that's that, what I told him. Yeah. I told him we actually had David Silverman on before. If you want my opinions about that situation, go watch that video. And he's like, a video is not an answer. I'm like, yeah, it is. When you're asking my opinion, and that video is about my opinion, yes, right? it is an answer. Uh, Wiz says, is it confirmed? You and Ridiculous. Snake are going on again? Yeah, it's confirmed. Uh, then super chat. Uh, Helios for five says Steve tends towards trying to educate people and debates are not for education, nor are they even meant to convince uh, the other. They are for the audience. Yeah, and that's true. Now, I do want yes. to convince my interlocutor, but I realize that's pretty untenable anymore. I, I did with Wayne. Obviously, Wayne changed his position. He left Young with Creationism. Now he writes. He's actually a writer for BioLogos now. He did a wonderful blog on BioLogos, and he thanked me. He, he called it the uh, debate that changed my mind. That had a significant impact in his life. Uh, but I don't think that's going to be the case most of the time when you have that kind of change. So when I went on Monitor Debate to talk to Snake, I, yeah, I'm going to use as much time as I can to get the information out there. If it's 90% of the conversation, oh, well, he could have interrupted any time. He, said, he could have said, look, blah, 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 blah. He never bothered to do anything because he had nothing to say. So the second time we're going to go on, I'm going to let him first tell me what he thinks my position is one at a time, not this 10-minute gallop. But what he thinks my position is, and then argue for that position and show for some reason that what I've said is incorrect. Very simple. And you're going have all the time in the world to do it. Jamie Russell for two says, do theism. And I think that means like if you're doing, like theism is part of this argument. So it's already there. So I'm not sure I understand. And yeah, Michael, sure the does, Canadian Jamie. atheist. Hey, hey for two Michael, says, buddy. Hey, oh, smiley face. Yeah, Michael, we'll get back on your podcast. We promise. If you guys haven't checked out uh, Michael, and, the Canadian uh, Atheist Podcast, go check him out because he's very fair. He's one of the more intellectually honest atheists that I've ever met. Uh, yeah. and so I, I appreciate that. And he's so a cool people, dude. Yeah, real quick, when people say that I'm against atheism, uh, that's just bullshit. Okay, I, I'm not. There, yeah. there are atheist channels that I support. There are atheists, like he's, he, you know, great podcasts that I support. I don't support new atheists and Team M that are the bottom of the barrel atheists that are running crappy arguments. I support the atheists that are running really good arguments. I mean, look at Paul G. I support Paul G. wholeheartedly, right? He's a great atheist. Um, but so... St uh, logic. Logic, yeah. Strain, strain uh, said, uh, people only see Steve talking about one topic because they themselves are obsessed with that talk of selective myopia. Good yeah. point. And Michael for two, again, says, the talk with Snake was sad. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of was, yeah. Well, yeah, like, like I said, what am I going to do? Just have dead air? He had nothing to say. But you notice yeah. on that, go if you look at that that video of moderator debate, every negative comment, every single one of them, is all of them. <laughs> Steve has a debate about mirroring atheism. Josh, uh, would our wrong atheists do not have burden of proof? Eric, Steve, oh, St Eric's not the one saying this. He Eric copy and pasted what what Josh was saying. So Josh also said Steve only has one topic: burden of proof. Steve, I'm not talking about <laughs> burden of proof. If, if you go look at every comment, not one of them shows I'm wrong. All they do is just bag on me for personal reasons because these are all the people that hate me. Uh, I have a lot of people that hate me because they and, – and, and this is the God honest truth. I'm not even lying. Almost everything that's ever been about me negative has always been because of my arguments uh, the, about atheism and stuff like that. They, they, they've all stemmed from that original But hurt. Total okay. butt hurt, yeah. Total butt hurt. Um, okay, uh, I asked him why the obsession, his answer, Matt Dillahunty. I told him if he has beef with Matt Dillahunty, then why not 
take it up with him. I it am. is very cowardly to disparage an individual who can't defend himself, given that Matt Dillahunty is not even a member of the group and is not aware of his post. Let me, let me make this very clear to people. Are you kidding me? Okay, for, first of all, there's so much wrong with this. I have an open letter to Matt Dillahunty. Matt Dillahunty went on Twitter, on tw uh, yeah, he went on Twitter, Right, which I don't even have on him. I'm not subscribed to him. My and favorite is still his excuse for blocking you on Twitter. <laughs> no, no, I'm not, not on Twitter. Twitch. I'm sorry. He was on Twitch. Oh, on but, Twitch, which I don't, yeah. I'm not even subscribed to him on. Calling, saying like I'm language bitch and I, you know, I'm wrong. Blah blah blah. I don't. Uh, Matt Dillahunty talks shit about Steve all, all the, the time. time without ever talking about like talking to but him. Here, about here's the, the difference. Argument. So I don't like. Why is it okay for him to do it and he, not for Steve to answer it? What? He is legit arguing that oh, here's a public figure, and unless the public figure's in the group, you can't talk about him. So when people talk about Frank Turek, uh, when they talk about um, any theist apologist, right? If they're not in the yeah. group, you can't. If they're public figures, they're public figures. And, I don't, and they don't even have to be a public figure. If they're on the internet exposing their arguments to be evaluated, they're public. I'm not a public figure, but I'm public. There's a huge difference, I think. Public figures are people of, of notability. I'm not a person of notability, but I am at least known, right? I mean, I'm out there. Matt Delahunty doesn't have to be in this group for him to know my arguments. He doesn't. He's seen my blogs. He's read my stuff. I mean, he, he says I'm a coward. I'm the one that wrote an open letter to Matt Delahunty to tell him to shut the hell up about me because he keeps lying about me. And I'm I'm happy to just show why Matt Dillahunty's wrong. How is that being cowardly? Also, he can address it anytime he wants. He has access to thousands of people. He could he could try to destroy my argument if he wanted to. He doesn't even touch it. Well, there's another there's another problem in here. I asked him why the obsession. His answer: Matt Dillahunty. I told him if he has beef with Matt Dillahunty, why not take it up with him? It is very cowardly to disparage an individual who can't even defend himself. Matt can't defend himself. Right. And by the way, this was only. I, I mean, I didn't spend like five hours going over all my history. I just picked. I just said, well, this is like an example. It was just a simple example. Like Matt Dillahunty puts out misinformation. I correct it. You know, it wasn't like some yeah, vendetta against Matt. Sense. Yeah, this doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I told him we will not let we will not let the group be used for. Can you stop moving it when I stop? Well, start I have reading? to see it too. Go ahead. I, I'll, I'll fight you. <laughs> I I told him we will not let the group be a used as a as a platform for such cowardly acts. If he has a beef with Matt Dillahunty, take it up with him. I mean, I'm sure that had this not been going on with Matt for fucking years two that years. there was an opportunity two years that he's been getting this wrong that there was an opportunity at one point for them to have this conversation matt dillahunty was the coward who refused Correct. to have the conversation yep. this is not steve being a coward responding to matt continuing for two years to still to like last week be lying about him yeah i would have gone this on non sequitur. yeah well kyle has a rain was going to rain it we were going to have a thing on non sequitur i was like i was like okay fine i'll, I'll go up against matt dillahunty and show he's wrong uh, but he didn't want to and, yeah, and, I, I and by the way, but I've never asked for it. I've never wanted to debate Matt ever. Kyle wanted, it and I said, oh, "Yeah, I guess so." But I've never said, "Hey, you know, Matt, debate me or Matt." He doesn't have any obligation to. Hey, I don't undoomed. give a shit. You know. Undoomed is here. Say hi. Hey, Undoomed. How you doing, buddy? Hello. He replied that Matt Dilla, that Mr. Dillahunty has his email, is a public figure, etc., 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 which had nothing to do with the fact of Mr. Dillahunty not being able to defend himself in McRae's comments. I, I don't know what Whatever. that even means. We're not allowed <laughs> to talk about public figures in in groups from now. Is that is that how this works? Is that is that this, the the rules we go by? So if you know, like I said, if if some Christian apologist that we think is wrong is not in the group we can't destroy their arguments i mean how absolutely ridiculous is this idiot to think that a person of, of notoriety a person who is a public figure also, has to be in a group for you to destroy we their, also point out say. that your debate and argument ha didn't mention matt at all like the Correct. argument that was being made had nothing to do no, with it. No, he only so asked me why do you it. do it's these things. It's not like you just started talk shit talking him for no reason. Yeah, no, he had asked me, well, well, why, why do you go against atheism so much? I'm like, look, I'm not going against atheism. What I'm going against is people using shitty arguments. And for bad example, arguments. like, yeah, yeah. Bad arguments. like for example, Matt Delahunty lying to people for two years and lying to him about me. He has specifically gone out of his way to lie about me. And I, after two years, I got sick of it. I wrote an open letter to Matt and said, look, I don't give a shit what the hell you you, you argue on your show. Stop lying about me. You've told people I'm a prescriptivist. I'm not. 
We've demonstrated I'm not a prescriptivist. I haven't even, even from my arguments from 2018 that I'm not a prescriptivist. This is like me telling people, oh, Matt Dillahunty is a is a moral anti-realist or something, or Matt Dillahunty is a um, UFO conspiracy nut. It, it isn't just a lie. That's not his position, Flatter right? There. It's a flat earther. There. Yeah. All right. He. <laughs> McCray is beyond despicable as he tries to justify his cowardly act and, in fact, blatantly lied and said I mentioned the name of Mr. Dillahunty. No, I, I, by the way, I corrected that. And so that's not a lie. I was mistaken. I thought he said it first. He did not. I, in, in the other uh, post, I even said, oh, I was wrong about that. I did mention it first, and I said I was sorry. Okay, when you make a mistake and you own up to it, that's not a fucking lie, you idiot. <laughs> Jesus Christ, this is like one of the dumbest admins I have literally seen in all my years on Facebook in any of these groups. I think this guy probably is the worst I have ever seen. And that's saying something, right? I mean, <laughs> holy Christ, man. Uh, wait, I, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You're kicked from the group at this point, aren't you? Oh, yeah, this was, I think, the day. Isn't he talking about you and you can't defend yourself right now? Oh, Inception! <laughs> oh, no! Oh! We have a winner! Hey! hey! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't even wait think a minute. Yeah, wait, wait a minute here. Wait, wait hold up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> this, I think this is why you keep me around. <laughs> I, I okay. didn't catch that. I should have. <laughs> you know what's funny is when you're involved in these things, you don't see the bigger picture. You're good at the bigger picture. You're right. I didn't even catch that. Holy shit. I feel stupid. What am I doing Wait this for? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. The amount of self-reflection here on his part. Oh, so God. does that mean he's gonna he's going to do the honorable thing and leave the group? <laughs> yeah, no, I'll, I'll message Eric. I, I guess he's very this. despicable for doing this. Yeah. He, Unbelievable, yeah. mind blowing how despicable this behavior is. Undoomed. Do you think you, you deal with stupid why people? You didn't notice? I mean, you know why you didn't notice this? Why? Because it because it's so foreign to you to not be able to talk about somebody and their arguments. Oh if yeah, not yeah. It's, it's That's just, why you didn't realize this it, it's because such, it's like it's a foreign concept. It's such a bizarre concept, right? You know, Undoomed deals with stupid people a lot. I mean, I I I, I, I love the way he does it. But he has to recognize that we have our own level of stupidity that we deal with, man. Uh, and this is what we oh, deal God. with, dude. I mean, this, so this is dumb. so goddamn dumb. It's ridiculous. <sighs> okay, so... I gotta move uh, it. I'm moving it. I'm moving it. It's really yelling at me. How he could lie in such a manner. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Uh... It was mind-blowing how he could lie in such a manner, aware that people can read the threads and see his lies. I even apologized for it and said, I thought I said it first. I was wrong about that. That's not a lie. Now he's lying about me lying. Or he's lying. He's lying about, I mean, he's out, the, the amount of like layer upon layer of shit is like a big ball of crap about layer of shit and worse shit. And, <laughs> he shit was monster. Yeah. willing to do anything to get out of the predicament he created for himself. <laughs> now, he challenged me to a debate with one rule and one rule only. Questions will be addressed. Oh, he actually brought it up to me. He wanted he wanted discussion, and I said one room at a time, and I had the first question that he never answered. And his he and never by the way, I also said the questions have to be on on point. This question had no relevancy to my argument. I'm not going to answer questions that are red herrings that have nothing to do with my argument. That I made that yeah, very clear. Yeah, didn't have anything to do with it. Yeah, uh, Helios for two said Chesh's BS detector is always on point. Oh, oh thanks. Sure. By the way, you know you should, you and Undoom should do something together. You guys would like cru crucify people. Oh, that'd be fun. It as would hell. be I brutal. Would I, mean, like I don't that. know if he wants to work with a woman, but you know, <laughs> we're not sure quite sure if you are one or not. But just in case, you know. Good point. Yeah. Racist against goblins. I see how it is. The debate. He had this Rube Goldberg contraption of an argument to which his, arri he, his arrived at conclusion is that atheism is the position that God that does not. That was not the conclusion. That had absolutely nothing to do with my argument. Oh my God, you're an idiot. I mean, you guys saw my argument. Was that the conclusion? Because I don't think it was by any stretch of the imagination. That was not. This is a special pleading argument that I have. That's that's the argument. It's special pleading if certain conditions are met. I, this is not my argument. This is next <laughs> level stupid. 
Thus, as such, the position is based on a claim, and as a claim entails the burden of proof. Hey, look, he actually described the problem that he's having. He's having the problem of the consequence of the logical argument being correct or not. Yeah, well, he has to demonstrate my position is wrong because he said my logic is wrong, yet he has the burden of proof to do that. He failed to do so. So even by his own uh, understanding, uh, limited childlike understanding of burden of the proof, um, if he p puts out a position of a claim that my logic is wrong, he needs to demonstrate that, or at least, you know, give me reasons why the logic is wrong. He never once touched the logic. What, what? So he fails in his own understanding of these things. Here, go more. Uh, first, the whole argument is a straw man. As a lot of atheists do not make this claim. That's not... What the hell is that going to do with the price of tea in China? It has... Yeah. Absolutely nothing. How many... Uh, what is the... What is it? How many pancakes do an alien fit roof purple? <laughs> Colorist green ideas sleep furiously. There you go. That was Noam Chomsky. Um, second, to test how it's flawed, I gave an analogy. And the whole argument broke apart with just one simple analogy. This is an analogy that was completely unrelated and made no sense. This, this, is, this is what happens when you have somebody who doesn't understand basic arithmetic trying to evaluate a calculus proof. Right? Oh, yeah. I mean, you're, sure. you're, you're just on so much of a different level that there, there's just no... Comp we, no it's way like that, that they're guy, gonna have a conversation it was like that guy on on teams that incel guy on teams channel the other day who thought he could fight ronda rousey oh, God. He's like, it's a street fight i would win if it was a street fight she, she and would... it's just like i what's she gonna do if i have a knife or a gun that's not a street fight then yeah if you and how many how many jobs has she broken she would kick your ass okay but go ahead that was glorious so if onus proper uh, pro bandai lies with atheists let's use his argument his conclusion the analogy and back to pedophilia that question ladies and gentlemen was not addressed and he squirmed around it for a good 12 hours and it and in all that time he was rely replying to comments answering other people posting his blogs and personal photos at all except answer one simple when question. When did that happen in the debate? The debate was 34 minutes long and I didn't post any pictures. 12 hours, eh? Yeah. <laughs> I think perceptions of time here are a little confused. Maybe a little bit of... I, I just... I don't know. I think that, yeah, I don't... Where is he getting 12 hours from? He must be talking about some other posts that I've had with him where I um, I posted some other stuff, but that has nothing to do with our debate. So I, I mean, it's just he's confused. Yeah, I don't know. All, and on the same time, he's completely ignoring that he never answered the first question or said anything about the logic. All he did was start making analogies about the burden of proof, which yep. wasn't any the argument. The, oh, that question, lady, oh, that, did I ban him for this annoying behavior? No. <gasps> <laughs> I think he did. Yeah, I think he did. I don't, think you, I don't think you banned him for his annoying behavior. I think you banned him because you got shown wrong and you got butt hurt. <laughs> oh, yeah. No. Yeah, I agree. He, he totally butt hurt. And... He said he won by forfeit, kept repeating it again and again. It was really getting annoying. Did I ban him? No. 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 <laughs> the hilarious part is he kept claiming he won when he broke the one single rule of the debate by refusing to answer one simple question for 12 hours. It was 34 minutes, and the first question was, is the logic wrong? If it is, where? He didn't answer that question. He, he's, he's, so, he's so unaware of the fact that he did not answer the very first question on the table. As we had said, one question Even at a time, Mod, and I'm going to give Mod, you the question. The person modding that debate agreed that he did not yes. answer that question. And then said, yes, then maybe we can move on to burden of proof once this part gets addressed, which was the debate. Even the mod! Oh, okay. And he... The, uh, Lamau, ha. <laughs> he called some participants on the threads names as he was getting badly owned by them. Did I ban him? No, but close to. <laughs> I'm you should be banning or... somebody you're, in, you're interlocking with no matter what's going on. Pull in another mod, and the other mod agreed with Steve, so you're stupid. Yeah. I promised him I, would, I will not exercise my admin role in the debate. 
he must have understood it as having free reign to do anything he wants beyond and after the debate. Well, yeah, no, and that was a misunderstanding. It wasn't just in the debate. Look, my thing is, if you debate an admin, you kick their ass and they get butthurt and they block you afterwards. That was my point. This is why I was yeah. saying, this is why I told him before, I said, look, I don't engage with moderators and admins on these types of things very often because they get butthurt and then they, they, they block you. So it was after the debate that I was referring to. I made it very clear that if if I show somebody an admin in wrong, they get butthurt and like, oh, I'm going to block this person. They do it all the freaking time. People have seen it happen in real time. So yes, it was, it was, there, was a conf <laughs> there was no confusion on my part. He was dishonest. He was absolutely dishonest. Well, you mean like he's being here? Yeah, go Shocker. figure. We, like, we saw the debate. <laughs> what the fuck? In his anger at being defeated and exposed, and <laughs> at not being able emotion. to deal with the loss and humiliation, what did the man do? Uh, he went crying, made a giant blog post claiming a bunch of shit that didn't happen after he blocked somebody, and, saying that you can't talk about people who aren't in the group, and as he is talking about some people who aren't in the group. And, 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 oh, wait, sorry, you were asking about Steve? And, I, and how humiliated am I when I'm putting this on display for people to evaluate with hundreds of people that are going to be watching it, thousands of people probably watch this eventually, I'm proud of this. I, I stand by everything that's happened. If you think that there's any way that he won this debate by one, not addressing my initial answer, not showing my logic is wrong, and then talking about burn of proof and Otis Barbande, which has absolutely nothing to do with my argument, I want to talk to you because I want, I want you to explain to me why you think that he didn't forfeit because that is a forfeiture by any standard. Anytime you do any kind of, I mean, this is basic rules of okay, debating. So, like, okay, I'm going to agree with this Josh guy. He said, that you lost the debate because you did not were not able to answer this one question. So I, I'm gonna agree with him in that a question was not answered. The very first question was not answered. And it was the question you asked him. Mm -hmm. Therefore, by that logic, he's the one who lost the debate. Right. That's and my that was my argument as well. Exposed for being a piece of shit. Yeah. And, and I love I love this. I love these the, what they do, uh the atheist new atheist TM. They want to make everything into some kind of appeal from emotion, right? They argue from what's called pathos. And so they want to make it sound like, oh, look, Steve's angry. Steve's humiliated. Steve, yeah, it, you know, he's defeated. Uh, none no, of this is none man. of this is clearly the case because I, I, why, if I'm so I'm humili laughing at this. Yeah, if I'm so humiliating, why did I make it into a video? Why am I showing to everybody for people to evaluate? And why is it that Cheshire and I are showing this guy's lying his ass off? I, I don't know how that translates to me being defeated and humiliated. I don't get that. So there's a it's disconnect amazing. there, I guess. Yeah, yeah, you want to? If you want to disconnect around here, look. If if if, 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 I, if I'm going to be humiliated, I got his brainstem disconnected. Cheshire and Sweet know how to humiliate me, me if they really want to. Okay, they, they know. But other than that, this guy, come on, really? The power dynamic, right? Okay, in his anger at B oh, what did the, what did the man do? Make a post and insult members by calling them six year olds. Oh, that's that oh, that's was really the reason he was booted. <gasps> that, 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 he was that, in the group did I right up feel? until that post. So, so we had a group like this where they have the most vile memes, and people arguing the stupidest things and saying the dumbest things. I make a humorous joke. And that was the reason why I got booted. Oak, oh, oak. Oh. So who? Wait, who wait. got burnt? Her? Who? Who got? Who got humiliated? Uh, who? Who? Who was emotional here? Yeah. Okay, hold up. Can you? Can we please note that this part right here confirms that he is breaking his own rules? He was in the. Uh, I make a post and insult the members of the group by calling them six-year-olds. That was the reason he was booted in the group right up until that post, which means he is posting all this block about you after you were removed from the group. Mm -hmm. That thing he said was not okay to be talking about somebody like this or in any manner if they're not in the group to defend themselves. I think the word's hypocrisy. Uh, all right, what else we got here? Steve McRae is, is one who so desperately wants to be seen as smart, yet his actions and his arguments negate that claim. I feel like your name should be replaced with his. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, this is look, a I mean, 
I, I, I'm, I, I, I'm also desperate. I'm going to say it. I, I, I am a little bit smarter than uh, on average. I mean, I don't think I'm an idiot. I mean, I mean, I, I, I at least have demonstrated that I have some intellectual capacity. I used to train people to operate nuclear power plants, for God's sake. I, I, that's not an easy job. You have to have some kind of awareness, right? Uh, I have had college. I have more than enough credits for a bachelor's degree. Um, I don't have to demonstrate anything to anybody about being smart. I hang out with very intelligent people that treat me with respect. I mean, Landon, uh, one of the smartest people on the planet, he and I have a great rapport with each other, right? And he respects my opinion. We have great dialogue about it. I've changed his position. He used to be a little bit more on the other side on a lot of this. And then I've convinced him by logic and an argument that I, I, I'm correct on it because he's a smart guy and smart people change their positions when they're exposed to logic and reason, right? That's what a smart person will do. So I, I don't have to be out there trying to prove anything to anybody about my intellect or, or being smart. I, I just don't. Chess is smart. She doesn't have any onus to prove that to anybody, but people have been noticing it. Even people that don't like her say, you know, Chess, Chess is a real bitch, but bitch is smart, right? <laughs> you know, they at least give her that. I do believe the people who dislike me are like, don't underestimate that person. Yeah, I yeah. feel like they don't listen. Yeah. So I mean, <laughs> but hey, who am I to judge? I mean, I, I, again, if people want to think I'm an idiot, by all means, I, that doesn't bother me in the in the least. It just means they underestimate me, but it doesn't mean that they show that my arguments are flawed. I just don't pretend to know shit that I don't know. <laughs> I'm I'm not gonna say like I know anything more than Landon does. I just assume Landon knows literally everything better than I do. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's just, just a general assumption. He I have probably one does. Rule of the universe. <laughs> I have one rule of the universe that is held true consistently, and that is going to be my claim to fame forever. Which is what? <laughs> but what? Uh, what's your claim to fame? My one, my one law of the universe. That, that what's the one law of the universe? That Landon is knows everything more about. No, 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 no. My one law of the universe is that if you ever don't know what's going on in a situation, you go find Keon and do the opposite. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mind. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Ke Ke yes. Ke 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 uh, Landon and Keon are both like a antithesis of each other because Landon probably knows more about anything. Yes. And now it doesn't mean him. he's always right. He uh, he doesn't have the absolutism that Keon has. Keon has absolute yes, hundred percent certainty yes. that whatever he says is going to be the opposite. Truth is going to yeah. be one eighty. It's yeah, every time opposite. without fail. Every I'm time. I'm going to I'm convinced that that law is going to hold in perpetuity. Yeah. So. Hooray! All right. Okay. So go ahead. He will drop names, indicating a wannabe, and wants to hang out with the big boys. But it seems the the big boys rejected him. Maybe Trust they him. saw him for what he really is. Thus, his bitterness towards Mr. Dillahunty. I, I don't quite don't understand think that this. Maybe Steve is a little bit bitter towards Matt because Matt's been being a piece of shit to him first, for no reason. And first of all, Matt's not high in the totem years? pole. I mean, big boys. I'm doing a show with Dr. Fuzz Rana. I'm, it's, I, I work with the organization for Dr. Hugh Ross. I have Landon Kurt Knoll on. Well, I have I Dr. Josh Rasmussen like on. I have Sisyphus Redeem. Big boys, Dr. Gary. If the big boys is Matt, is yeah. Matt Dillonby, then I think that's very telling. I've got Graham Oppie on, for God's sake. I, I, I was in touch with Dr. Krauss on. I had Dr. Lawrence Krauss I had a discussion with. I, I have Dr. Graham Priest that I might have on that I, I've talked to before. I mean, if you want to talk about big boys... It's, Matt Dillahunty pales to somebody like Graham Oppie or, or Graham Priest or, or Gary, Dr. Gary Merritt. Uh, how many, I, I've talked to Dr. Mary Schweitzer. I've talked to Dr. Prothero. Uh, you know, I mean, dozens and dozens of people that are big boys that don't think this way about me. Not, uh, yeah, I, not, think this is, I think this is really so. telling of like the, the ACA kind of, pro, the, sort of the, some of the problems in there. Like I have, like just seeing Matt's behavior in the past and like even recently because this behavior is continual is that he projects a lot. Like oh, yeah. he projects a lot. Do you want to know what philosophers and, think of Matt Dillahunty? Go ask them because I do know a lot of them and they are not fans of his philosophy. Uh, matter of fact, a very good, no. well, real quick, a very good video by Sisyphus Redeemed, Dr. Gary Merritt. Uh, he talked about Matt Dillahunty eight years ago and everything he said about oh. him still holds. Yeah. And, and so like a lot of the respect that I had for Matt is like n almost non-existent at this point. It's pathetic at this point, quite frankly. Um, does that mean some of his arguments don't still hold? Oh, sure. Does he have good analogies sometimes? Yeah, sure. That's sure. there's no problem with that. But that has nothing to do with whether or not you respect somebody as a person and, and their behavior. On the other hand, if you're willing to 
it, to dismiss the behavior to to say that well that behavior doesn't matter because of because you like that person then you you start running into problems you see this with celebrities like if a celebrity does something awful are you willing to forgive them for that awful thing because you care about them as a because you feel attached to them as a celebrity if you switch the name are you just as insulted by whatever it is that they're doing and i i would recommend that this person maybe play that game and say if you were switched matt dillhunty and Steve, and talked to Steve as if he was Matt Dillahunty, would you be saying the same things? Yeah. Yeah, so I don't know what he means by Matt Dillahunty is a big boy. If I wanted to suck up to Matt Dillahunty, I would have a long time ago. I don't play that game. Uh, but the philosophers that I know, the well, actual what, experts, what, what benefit? I guarantee it, they're not, they're not going around going, oh, look at Matt Dillahunty, the brilliant philosopher of our time. That's not happening at all. Now, he's got some good points, but when he said, like, well, Steve can think I'm stupid, I've never said Matt Dillahunty is stupid. I don't think he's stupid at all. I think he's dishonest. And, and by the way, what did David Silverman say the other day? Same thing. That Matt, he's that, dishonest? That he's yeah. dishonest. I mean, and I think a lot of people have seen Matt be intellectually dishonest. Uh, I fact, think he said that Matt was a dishonest coward, specifically. Yeah, it's, so, I mean, people are noticing these things, and this is what I'm saying. Uh, it's all about the argument. I don't care about his personal life. doesn't bother me in the least. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that. I don't go personal with Matt, but after two years of him strawmanning me and lying about me, Come on. Uh, yeah, I, this I, isn't a. Per Here's the thing. What this guy is doing is a personal attack. What absolutely. we're doing, what we're doing is responding to a personal attack by saying, like, you, we're showing how you did in fact lie. This is a factual case. This is not a personal attack. We're not saying you lie about everything or you are a liar. We've said we've said you are lying in this case. Here's how you are lying. That's not a personal attack. There's th there's this issue where people get they've gotten attached to one being correct and two if you attack an argument they take it personally as if i and i think uh david silverman was saying this that you cannot have a discussion with anyone anymore because if you say that they're wrong they or you and you show that they're wrong you back up your bullshit then they take it as if you've offended Absolutely. them as a person. And it's the same, it's the exact same thing that theists used to do more often. I see it a little bit less now, actually, where if you attack your their religion, they take it as a personal offense. If you say you don't believe in their God, they take it as a personal offense because their God is a part of who they are. It's the same thing applies to politics, the same thing. This is why the, the it, there's a really big problem with having conversations about uh, gender identity because this is this person's identity that you're talking about and disagreeing with. They're not looking at it as the, as the idea or the concept or, or the argument. They're looking at it as you're attacking them, the person, which is why it's so easy to jump to, oh, well, you're transphobic, which isn't the case because that's not what's happening it's just this is what this person's doing they, they're so tied to matt dillahunty and to their atheism that it's a part of who they are as a person and so putting any any kind of pressure on that which you didn't even really do the consequence was what was putting pressure on him and he got so afraid of it that he's lashed out yeah. and and thinks you're an awful person for attacking him when you didn't they they, they treat him like a like a like a priest they treat, they mean like the, they, they put him on a pedestal but super chat uh, Kakarot for one nine nine says Kent is okay with Steve moderating our discussion. Um, I don't know what that means. Are you the one that uh, met, are you the one that emailed me that was talking about uh, getting having uh, Kent moderate your, uh, me moderate your debate with Kent on my channel? With but games. his sec his secretary said that Kent didn't want to, and what has he changed his mind? Because I was telling Chess that. There was they about a 25 to 50% chance. They said that they just got off. Yeah, they said that Steve or that they just got off the phone with and that Kent is okay with uh he and James with you, Steve uh -huh. and James moderating a discussion that I guess Kakarot Oh, on like moderate with. debate. Or my I guess channel. So. Yeah, give us, uh, email me the details on that. If you're the person that I was talking to before, um, yeah, I, I just tell me what channel. I don't care if it's my channel moderate debate, if you want both of us to to moderate it. Uh I, whatever I'm down because I know I know that that person who emailed me wanted me to moderate very Kent. Um, I'm, I'm happy to do so because I mean I'm, I'm moderated 12, 13 times for Kent. It's just Ooh. the one time I I specifically didn't promise Kent you get a 50 50 air time was with yeah Aaron. that was with Aaron yeah. yeah and I knew that probably pissed him off would be the last time but I didn't over promise I've never lied to yeah. Kent so yeah. all right go ahead uh oh I got serious there I took my glasses off okay. He's a sad case of Dunning-Kruger, sees himself bigger than what he actually is, is despite for, desperate. or is desperate for acceptance and recognition, and is willing to go 
to any means to play out his delusions. Just, just, just love me. I, I, I just want to be, be dishonest sometimes. with no shame or remorse. You mean that thing you apologized for and corrected? I want to be intellectual. You mean with a logical thing? You even made a Venn diagram to make it easier for you? It all seems a desperation to give his life some relevance. I'm, I'm sad. I, I, I'm just sad. I, I just, I just want this to. This is like, I, I'm just assuming this entire paragraph is projection. Yeah, it's either project. It's, it's certainly to me, uh, it's almost like I'm. It's not quite an ad hoc fallacy, but it's, it's certainly like, uh, like an argument to pathos of, of some emotional thing directed to me for some weird reason, right? You know, like, like I don't know how this any of this applies to anything. Um, at all, uh, I mean, it, does, it, it doesn't. He's a, he's going after your character and saying you're a bad meanie poopy right. head. I mean, this is the man. This is the this is the Steve's a meanie poopy head argument. Steve's a meanie poopy head. He called us six year olds because yeah. we're doing the thing that I, he I, just I, we're just what this is. I'm, I'm a mean poopy head. Um. <laughs> You're so, you're so hurt and you got destroyed so badly, which is why we're talking about it. Okay. Uh, he is so far out gone that he sees himself as an authority on how people should call and label themselves. <laughs> and if they don't agree, calls them dumb, uneducated, stupid, etc. And is such a toxic and obnoxious individual. <laughs> well, that's your opinion, man. Mm. I, 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 again this is all care this is what i say it's all character assassination just like the debate that i had with snake is right on uh uh snake was right on modern debate every one of those comments was pure character assassination it's like okay oh, look yeah. you don't like me okay move on i what am i supposed to do i'm, I'm not going to stroke you okay but if you want to show my arguments are wrong that's a completely different story i'm not here to be liked i'm here to be listened to and it, people get entertained by it and maybe learn something that's my well, goal. And these people and these people come to you and then get butt hurt that they don't know what's going on. Yeah, he was the one that was coming after me, going, "Steve, you're you're an idiot. You're you're you know you're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong." I mean, okay, show me. I would like to just see inside of this group for like thirty seconds and just scroll through and highlight every time they mention somebody's name who isn't in the group, <laughs> and then just post it and then get immediately kicked. Yeah. Uh, that was probably what would happen. And by the way, if, uh, if Undoom's still listening, uh, got some updates for you later on. I'll, I'll email them to you too. But uh, um, hopefully we can get um, a couple shout outs if you are entertained by this stuff and send people to come watch other people be d dogging on dumb people. Because uh, it's like, this is, yeah, this I, mean, is I, I need a little promo. promo. Uh, you know, people I do know. kind of feel like we're kicking the stupid kid in the yeah, corner. Yeah, but it's been tough, man. I don't self-promote that much. So if you, you know, help us like maybe would promote it, a little bit. Would it be too far? And I'm asked, I'm not saying this. I'm asking if it would be too far to call this person an intellectual cripple. I don't think that'd be that too far. Yeah, I don't think it'd be too far. Is that okay? Can I say that? I don't know if I'm allowed to say is, that. Is, I mean, that's why I'm asking. You, well, you're I have to explain it. I'm yeah. just asking. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um. Look at wait. I got yeah. Look at his oh, no. supposed look oh, at yeah. his supposed to be intelligence. He posted the evidence, the very reason why he was banned. What? Oh, what? I don't know. God, whatever. I, I just <laughs> and his dishonesty continues claiming, I banned him for the debate. A screenshot which shows that it is not only me who sees McRae for what he actually is. <gasps> Hashtag Steve McRae exposed. I mean, to be fair, does, is this person just unaware of like the McCrazy group? Oh, I don't, like, I, I don't think he knows. <laughs> I, I doubt it. Like, if this person doesn't know, then, like, I guess this is news to you that people don't like Steve. Uh, surprised? <laughs> Chalked Pikachu face? And, 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 and yet all <laughs> the, says, I'm asking for a friend. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the almost, a, friend. almost everybody that doesn't like me is ones that disagree with my arguments but <laughs> unable to show that I'm wrong. Uh, why is there a strange correlation with that? That's a weird coincidence. It, it is a very high correlation, mm -hmm. and I don't... Can't tell you why the people that agree with my arguments oh wait they like me uh oh you know people that i care about in my love in my life oh they seem to like have no problem with my arguments um and if they did they would tell me yeah hmm. whatever all right whatever. Go on. 
And his dishonesty continues, claiming I be- uh, blah, 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 blah. Maybe this is the reason a lot of people hate him, and why he was rejected by the big boys. Example, Matt Dillahunty and his circle of followers. Again, how is that Dillahunty why the big the boys? Why are the only EG Matt Dillahunty? Why I, is I just had David Silverman Matt? on. David Silverman, I'm sorry, was bigger in the atheist community than Matt Dillahunty, and Dave Silverman is now a friend. I'm going to be on his channel next month. Uh, I get along with Seth Andrews. I just talked to him oh. the other day. He's a pretty big member. I, I, I Lawrence Krauss on. You know who is I've never actually either seen that say that they don't like Steve is still Aaron. People say that Aaron has such a big issue with Steve, but I have never seen Aaron say anything Arne other than we had an argument on Facebook and I blocked him. Yeah. Shit talking, yes, but saying that you're a problem or that like he doesn't say he like he doesn't has really bother that much. Yeah, he. I hope, yeah, I'm sure he'll talk shit about it. me behind my back. I, I, I'm okay with that. It's our. I mean, know, that's, that's Aaron doesn't, spend, possible, Aaron doesn't go on the air. So I'm talking about publicly. Yeah. yeah public He's going to air and lie about me, you know. Yeah, uh, I'm, I, I've seen nothing of this. I mean, do I think Aaron is a little bit intellectually dishonest, a little bit sometimes on uh, philosophy? Yeah, I mean, I, I have to be honest with myself and think that he actually is. Um, I don't know. His if Twitter gets too. a little bit yikes sometimes. Yeah, yeah. but uh, you know, I don't. You don't see me going after Aaron unless he unless he did say something public, and then I'll address it. But not like Matt. Matt has right. been actively for two years lying about me, and and I just haven't had enough. You know. You know who's been actively lying about you for a really long time too. My mom, Kyle. <laughs> Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we'll get we'll get into that next week. Hashtag crazy. new lies by Kyle. Um, yeah. Oh God. Well, no, maybe we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Um, where are we at? Uh, someone told someone me. told me he was kicked out of his own YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> I am a prophet. Yeah. I thanked the friend and told him, I'm not interested in the man or what he does, only what he does in this, in the group. Uh, I mean, at least people are admitting that it's your channel now. <laughs> oh, I yeah. Guess. Yeah, well, even the person that kicked me out admitted it was my channel. And then lied yeah. about that afterwards and said, oh, well, I created it for him. No. But anyways. I'm not drunk enough for this. I'm going to need a beer. Why, why are we doing this sober? <laughs> I don't have us? no idea. We should have been drunk. I, I'm telling you this. Th yeah, I, I. Well, no, no, no. I was thinking. Uh, I'll, I'll correct that later on today. I think. All right, going on. <gasps> Someone to up uh, and oh, one of his friends was telling a story that didn't happen. The thread is still here for anyone to read. Thus, another lie. Another lie. What? Dun, dun, so dun. somebody. So one of Steve's friends lied about something, and you're blaming Steve for it? I don't. Uh, I don't even know what this is referring to. I have no idea. What was that thing about birds of the same feather? Yeah, all my audience, uh, all you are liar, liar, liars, because Steve's the biggest liar on the internet. Ergo, if I was lying, it would automatically be the case that you are all I liars as well. I distinctly remember, I distinctly remember somebody whose uh, name we, like isn't really worth remembering because it's escaping me right now. Went uh, during uh, right after Dumb Fuck of the Year, went on to uh, went on to Red's Rhetoric's channel because he was on Twitter going about call like and called me a liar. Said that I was lying to Red's, and so he went on to Red's channel and Red's was like, "So what did Chesh lie about?" And he was like, "Oh well, maybe she didn't really lie. So Chesh isn't a liar. Well, no, she's lying. Well, what is she lying about? Oh well, you know." And then like never answers. Yeah, uh, look, I call people liars all the time, but you know what I do? I show when they lied. Right. Now, and most of them can say, "Look, we we I I don't know if that's necessarily lying. We'll call it a little disagreement." I do that same. People people Chesh you don't know, call people a liar, and I'm like, I don't know if we really lie. I get that, right? There's some maybe ambiguity in some cases. I do understand that, right? But at least. Every time somebody says, hey, look, this person is lying, they give reasons. She just thinks somebody's lying. She gives reasons for it. She doesn't sit there and go, oh, they lied. And I ask her, what do they lie about? Oh, it doesn't matter. I, I don't know. They, I just oh, call they it just a lie. They just did because of reasons. No, she'll give an, a, 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 you know, a, a, an actual argument for it. Do you have to accept yeah. it? Well, of course not. But, I, I but, give distinct examples and explanations as to why I think someone has but we lied. All look at things different, usually with more than one example. I usually don't go and call somebody lying without having more than one example of that is the fact that and I can on, actually and make honest a question, plausible case. Honest question, Chess. Have I ever asked you to lie or have you ever seen me lie about anything? Be honest. I mean, no, up. No, I've seen you be incorrect about things well, that's not at lying. best. That's I not, no, that's that not lying. 
Yeah, exactly. So the, the like That's something not that I think I asked you, to be lying. Of course, so, I'm incorrect on things. My right, fiction. I, I don't I mean double is, down. What I yeah, what I mean is like I I've seen you get things wrong that you should know, and then you correct yourself. So it's like it's not like you're lying on like you're not lying. You're saying something that you should have known, yeah, but, but hey, it gets lost things, right? in your brain somewhere. It's, yeah, it's a, it's so a, it's a, not it gets lying. Mixed up, but yeah, but I've never I've, I haven't lied to Chess. I don't lie to Reds. I don't lie to Sweet. And yet people think I'm like the biggest liar on the planet. A bullinator? I've never lied. I've never lied to bull. So it's kind of weird that the people that are closest to my life that I've never lied to, they have never seen me lie, against all the other people that say that Steve's the biggest liar on the internet. Okay, great. Show me where I've lied, uh, because I'm I'm still waiting for somebody to do that, because everything they've every time they tried has always been out of context, completely. Yeah. Uh, uh, completely yeah. bizarrely out of context. But anyways, it's not well, about the, me. The best you can get is like, um, uh, maybe if you were to say something along the lines of of like not enough of a follow through on something maybe but that's not a lie because at some point like okay with the gym situation he presented something and then didn't follow through with the thing he presented that in in that being the case by accident or that being the case by a change in situation that's not a lie however in jim's case because he went out of his way then double tripled quadrupled yeah i mean down, there's an argument we have that right now he was lying yeah, now but I'm i was talking about lying. the first case yeah but right? yeah you know sure yeah exactly yeah um and yeah. by the way sweetie this is very correct uh, she says steve doesn't lie to me because he's not suicidal yeah i i don't want to die yeah, I don't care. Um, yeah. I, I people don't understand my fear of her, but it's 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 not it's not an irrational fear. But okay, um, so could continue. That is the smiley face. That is the whole story, and the threads and posts are there for anyone to pursue. This is the truth. As for McRae's claim, not so much. This is just to set the record straight for clarity and for transparency. Personally, I don't care. Really, you don't care. Yeah, it's, per, it's now. Per, I think you're it, lying. It's peruse, and by the way, bitches love smelly faces. Everything's better that is the with a smiley face. Biggest lie in this whole post. I don't care is the biggest <laughs> lie in this entire post. He seems to care because he spent how that long lying about and, and and talking shit about me when I'm not in the group, which he said you can't do. <laughs> she had such a big problem with. Oh my god, I have one simple principle in life. On a personal level, the value of words depend on the value of the person who spoke them. Oh, I'm sorry you have such a poor impression of yourself. Maybe you should go get some help. Maybe? Oh no. You poor soul. Go see a therapist if that's your actual stance. Thus, since to me they are nothing, I don't even know them. Then their words and claims and opinions mean nothing to okay, me. Okay, real I quick here. Where real you had this other debate? Really, with yeah, that, thank you. that was it. That was all I was gonna say. Thank you. You took it from me though. I was. I was. I, I was. That's where I was gonna go. Wait a minute. If he doesn't know me, how the hell we have had a prior debate and I made a video about him? Did, did he say that from the very beginning? Was that the, for the first things he said? This is not the first time <sighs> I'm debating the man. Am I confused here? Chess picked it up. I picked it up. How? What the hell? I'm so Who is this person? Here. Can we go know. back? To, yeah, we're back at the top. Can we go back up a yeah. little bit? Can yeah, we go back yeah, up yeah. a little bit? There's just something that I wanted to double check and read real quick. Um, While you do that, I'll read the super um, chat. It he is was, very oh. cowardly to disparage an individual who can't defend himself, given that Mal Dillahunty is not even a member of the group and is not aware of his post. <laughs> I wasn't aware of this post either. A friend of mine, Eric, had it pointed out to me. Uh, hello? Are you that not lacking self-awareness, Josh? I mean, when I say that you're stupid, I don't mean it pejoratively. I mean it invectively. You're an idiot. It's not just a mere pejorative. You are dumb. You have a low IQ. You are the moron level. There's a difference between an insult and an assessment. The assessment can be insulting. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, that's what I'm saying. It's not just mere pejorative. I am. I, this is my actual assessment of this person, that he is on the moron level. Oh my god, dude. This is somebody just who does not have just a very that high one IQ. one line. Just that one fucking line. The... Ma the it's, it is very cowardly to disparage an individual who can't defend themselves given that they're not a member of the group. And what more do you need? It, are this, I guess they're admitting they're a coward. Because that's what they're doing. I, I'm just blown away at the, at the uh, level of disconnect of this idiot. Helios, $5. I'll read this one. People call Cheshire a liar because she is tricky and gets dishonest people to make fools of themselves 
Usually by letting them trap themselves. Well, she's she's a goblin. Oh, thanks. Yeah, she's a goblin. That's I, what they I, do. It's not hard to to get a dishonest person to demonstrate their dishonesty. You usually don't need to use dishonesty to do that. You usually just need to ask a sh one or two straightforward questions. Like that one person who was asking you questions about how uh, somebody could uh, be found liable for non for uh, what they were doing or saying about non sequitur so shit. Because they asked like, well, how could this apply when that applying was in the original post? And like I'm in that I got that person to admit that they hadn't even looked at the post they were asking questions about. Like, dude, yeah. stop wasting I, I, everybody's I, I time. Happen. Asshole. I, I, and by the way, Eric says this is just a response. I said, Dan, I got a complete moron. I reviewed the debate today and I had a response to my show today, which I've done. And I'll get back with yeah. I'll, I'll message Eric later on today and say, look, um, hi, Eric. I, I'll post him if you know this video. Maybe a bro. But uh, okay, so, wrong. Oh, hang on. Well, I'm clearing the wrong thing. I want. Uh... No, that's you. Oh, there you Hi. go. All right. So, all right. so I can get rid of the display capture here. So uh, in a nutshell, uh, I think I've thoroughly demonstrated that this debate was forfeited. I think this person just was butthurt. They removed from the group uh, because of that. Even the mod then, agreed. The person moderating the debate agreed. Like, I don't, I don't know how this right. person thinks. Like, quite frankly, that moderator who was doing that debate should be addressing that post and should be addressing yeah. this person in DMs and being like, listen, you can't do this, but... I messaged them, they didn't message back to me. Um, one of the other mods for that group is in the Great Debate Community group. He he doesn't see a problem, but I'm like, this is he's not really one of the smartest people I've ever met either. Um, but hey, I, again, that whole group, from what I understand, there's like 20 mods in there. If I'm not told, not one of them really has any intellectual capacity. Now, I'm not trying to be disparaging. I don't know all of them, uh, so I don't want to be a hasty generalization. But if this is the caliber of admin and moderations that they have, I mean, that's pretty ridiculous. TJ is the only one that actually seemed to make sense. He even said, look, yeah. I'm not following this, but he at least tried to. I respect that. I had no problem with that. But I also had somebody like the other day, you know, say, well, your argument's wrong. And I say, well, like, what's wrong with it? And they say, well, I didn't read it. And I'm like, Okay. So these arguments, they're yeah. going to stand on their own merit, and they will be talked about. I know for a fact some of these arguments have been talked in atheist groups all around the world. Just wait until Steve writes a book. I have every intention. Okay, so there was a guy making a claim. I can't remember who it was. I think it might have been Jim. He was making some claims that, that well, I've written a book about it now, and da-da-da-da-da. And I was just like, I'm going to write a children's book that's not related to anything, and then I'm going to self-publish it on Amazon, just so I can be like, fuck you, I wrote a book. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, Jackson Weed had actually, he had asked me to write a Shit. chapter. Jackson Weed has written a book with uh, R.J. Downing uh, called The um, the Rock the um, the Rocks Were Right or something like that. Um, but uh, I, he wants me to, to, well, he's talked about writing a chapter with me, but so did Chris Hansen, and look what happened there. So I don't know. I mean, I love to write, a, a, I, I would really like the chapter. I don't want to write a whole book because I, I just don't think it would be something people would be interested in reading. But a chapter might be. Uh, but it would just basically be reiterations of what I write on my blog, right? And so if anybody really wanted to write a, something, all they have to do is go to my blog and kind of take my arguments and run with them. I have no problem with that. I mean, these are all public stuff. I mean, just give me credit. But uh, these arguments are going to be talked about on Reasons to Believe. They're, they're, they're talked about on all these other channels they go on. Um, it's about time people started addressing them. If they, if they think they're, they're wrong, that's fine. They might be. I'm not saying that they're... Uh, you know, I I know for an absolute surety that they're correct. If you find a problem in the logic, then that means it was never proven to begin with, right? You don't you only can disprove a proof that has not been proven. Then, in which case, it wasn't a proof to begin with. You can't disprove something that has been proven. Once something's proven, it's proven in perpetuity; it cannot be undone. So, if this is these are actual proofs, then you should be able to determine whether the logic is correct or not, right? And again, I think the the summary of this particular argument, I'm. I'm pretty confident it has to be correct. I don't see how it can't be. I if I made a mistake in the, in the in the logic, you're right. Then I I can yeah. fix that. But I think your best bet is any time that this is the appropriate way to enter the discussion moving forward. Outside of people like asking you questions to clarify on things, it, any discussions about this should essentially start with the post you started with because we've been over the details and the simplicity of it and, and like walk like walk through it so many times that you may as well just be presenting the whole thing at this point. And like, if people want to know, they can either ask a specific question, like not, what does this mean? No, ask like a specific question or we, or they go back and look if they care. 
right. to say, hey, go check out on the b bunch of videos I've done about it where we've already discussed it. This person is just a moron. This person straight up just was so scared of the consequences of the logic being correct that they couldn't even address the logic itself. They had to immediately jump to the consequence because that is a separate issue. The burden of proof issue is a separate conversation that has nothing to do with and the argument worse, you were making. It's just a conclusion after the fact. And it's worse. It's not even a logical and necessary conclusion. It is, I would say, it's it, right. it'd be, mommy, it, an implication. But but yes. implication is not necessarily an entailment, right? It's, it's not a as strong. Potential, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a potential consequence. Um, that is a separate discussion that can be had, but you have to get through the logic first. Uh, Res42 said, perpetuity and perpetuity and perpetuity. <laughs> and Exploratory Minds for 10 said, uh, a little donation and message for Chesh. As you expressed interest in my garden, got runner beans, peas, carrots, onions, radish, and potatoes all beginning to show up now. We'll be in a small video soon. <laughs> What are you, what are you making, a stew? Maybe eventually. Hmm. He's growing all the vegetables. I've been, I, I, I've been making this really good dish, and I know we do side things here, so side thing. Uh, what I would do, I, I, got, I got some uh, a nice head of uh, cauliflower with stem and the stalk and everything. Mm -hmm. I, broke it, I broke it down to the, the little uh, collets or whatever they're called, and I put it, put it in a roasting pan. Olive oil, or I use canola oil because I'm out of olive oil right now. Salt and pepper, a little mesquite seasoning, and Chinese five season, which is more like a, like a licorice mm. and other stuff. And just roast it for, for about 30 minutes, give or take, 20 to 30 minutes, and just let it roast. Mm. Those stalks are, oh my God. People throw away the lettuce, you know, the leafy part of the crab, of the cauliflower. Don't do that. So good. It, it, it. Chop it up. Oh my God. It Chop is, it up. It's like, it's like it. popcorn. It, try it. I mean, I, it's, I, I, I'm a mm. huge fan of this. So, I mean, you can put Chesh anything crap, you want on it, but it doesn't episode. matter. But just roasted cauliflower is amazing, man. Uh, when I get my own place again, I'll I'll get a little bit of a space set up in the in the kitchen and, and have that set up so I can do chess crafts more often. Yeah, we people enjoyed those. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's wrap it up, guys. Uh, we have the two-hour yeah. mark, so this is probably a lot longer than I expected. But I thank you guys for, like, Got evaluating it. this. Um, I'm not saying anybody go over and do anything in that group. That's just silly. But, I mean, if you want to go wa look at the, the actual debate, it's still there. Um, people have asked if they can post this video in that group. I don't care what you do. You probably get blocked for it, but uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. But I don't care what you do, but good luck with it. I know a lot of people don't care. It'd be kind of, it'd be kind of funny. Yeah, a lot of people don't even care. They're like, yeah, that group's you know toxic as hell, anyways. Um, but there's so many other groups out there. I mean, why, why bother with a group that even though there's like a hundred thousand people and like, like seven people think they're talking it or something like that? There's no activity in these these large groups because they've been around so long and people are just not active in them. So. I mean, the, my group is only 730 people or something like that, 711 people. Something like that. Yeah, yeah, we get, you know, 10 comments, you know, 10 posts a day probably right now. So if you're on Facebook and you want to join the Great Debate community on Facebook, again, link in the video description. But Chess, what do you got for us? And then we can... Um, I'm going live in two hours, so that'll be about four, and I'm, we're going to be doing the second uh, episode of Crossover, which is going to have Unholy Roast, Dapper Dinosaur, and Gutsick Gibbon, Erica, uh, who will be going over the next 30-ish or so questions from at Atheist, 100 Questions for Atheists. Uh, the first half was really fun, so now we're going to do a second episode. It'll probably end up being three episodes, but this is going to be the middle one. And then the last one, I think we're planning on having like a drinking party for the finale. Oh, well, hey, so. you had me at drinking. Uh, even I, I, yeah. I don't know why I keep doing I don't drink that much. People know that, but as I want to, but it's just very difficult. <laughs> 4 p.m. EDT. The one my time. Okay, well, that's not too far. In two hours. I'll definitely be watching. Um, oh, well, uh, I'll be chat. posting once this is out. I'll be post once we're out of here. I'll be uh, getting the video itself set up, so that'll be ready for people to click on over. Uh, Helios for five says Steve doesn't realize he has already written a book. He just hasn't put the chapters in order, made re reference section, and made his table of contents. He's probably not I lying. Mean, yeah, kinda, I mean, yeah, you're I mean, right. If, you, I if you just put my blogs and post in there and stuff like that, but I mean, I could expand upon that. What I what I need somebody to do. Um, who is an editor and knows these topics is basically take what I've written, run with it, and then you know 
explain it the wrong way. Organize, like, yeah. yeah, organize it into a way that is, uh, uh, you know, it, all you have to do is get your blogs and change them into a book format, which probably need like between blogs to have art, little arcing bits to connect them together. It is weird when I'm cited, right? Though, because I mean, these are not published things. There's just a blog. And so it's not really like a formal citation, but I have noticed in other groups, people posting my, my blog on there, people have been citing me, people have been running my arguments. Now, sometimes I've noticed like somebody, like one time they, they actually did my entire argument, but they were nice enough to say, look, I don't know where this argument came from, but this is a really good argument kind of thing. And the first comment underneath was, oh, that's from Steve McRae. And I was appreciative of that. So, I mean... You know, I, I like novel yeah. new arguments. I like be, I like adding to the it dialogue. It would be nice if there was an actual proper citation. So finish writing a book while we're waiting for non sequitur, I guess. Yeah, like is that, is that how it works? Uh, I wouldn't know where to begin, man. I just wouldn't. Uh, go buy, go organize your blogs in order of relevance. I, I know so, my limitations. Like, That's why going, I need somebody to write okay, it with not, me. Yeah, not relevance. Organize your blogs in order of, if you understand this, then you go on to understand this, in order of complexity. So you put them in that way, and then you just need to reword them and rewrite them in a way that flows together. I might think Easy. about that. Yeah, and by That's the, only leave, one me, thing. leave us some comments of what blog posts you write. I want to see. Like the last one I, I, I did with the, oh, not the gumballs, but before that with the Dr. Malpass. That was hard. Yeah. That was not yeah. an easy blog to write. I had to spend three days figuring out that argument from William Lane Craig's uh, debate with Malpass, and I had to go to Malpass and ask him for help on that. Um, so I do try to, to make sure that I, I get Malpass's position correct. So I do look into it these appeared. things. But if you got something you want explained, right, in philosophy, um, let me know. Maybe I can give it a shot. I'm, I'm always looking for new things. All right. Oh, and side note, chat. Good job. We ended up with a total of nine, eight or nine <laughs> trolls in the chat. Oh, not bad. Well, by that I mean we had one troll and they had nine accounts All or right. eight accounts. So I'm gonna leave you, <laughs> leave you guys. Uh, put up a big shout out to my friend Undoomed. Loved his channel. So if you see, you saw him in the thing, then go to his channel, subscribe to him. Like he needs more subs, yeah. please. But uh, you know, <laughs> I really want to start doing some things with him too because I just enjoy his content, even though he's kind of wrong on Picard. No offense. I watched Picard. I, I, I was watching on Doom's stuff. Yes, I watched his stuff. And he was did a he did a hangout with uh, on Star Trek's Picard. And I hadn't seen the episodes yet, right? So I know, want to get an undoomed crossover with Linkara. Who? Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. With Linkara. Linkara used uh, used to be part of Channel Awesome. He used to be part of the uh the old video game movie review. Oh, you're the, yeah, well you're more of that. Old, old school YouTube. Yeah. He well, he did. He does comic books. He does a show called Atop the Fourth Wall, and but he's a big Star Trek guy, and he does a lot. Of Star yeah, Trek well, stuff I, I watched Guide Picard, also, and so. I, I didn't think it was that bad. Now I did take his criticism on the whole holodeck guy. That one, he is like, you know, he's, he's like, there's like five different versions of him. That seems a little odd, but uh, I thought Picard was pretty good. But I, I'm not going to debate Undoomed on it. But uh, go check out his channel because it, he does really good stuff. But debate that, on this subjective thing. Exactly. Get some good subjective arguments because. We don't. We need more of those, right? And by the way, no pineapple on pizza. Good night. Bye. <laughs>